trying to start this rebuild on a high note here in year one. Aggies making a change at kicker from last week to this week. Brett Money will kick off and will likely handle field goals and extra points as well. Here comes the opening kickoff. The Aggies won the toss. They chose to kick off first. And this one is through the end zone over the head of Jordan Johnson, who is back deep for Hawaii. So, Danny, both programs have been playing two quarterbacks this year. For Hawaii, it's been Joey Yellen and Braden Shager. Shager started the opener. It's been Yellen starting the previous three. But the quarterback situation for both programs, a little unknown going into this week. Yeah, it's kind of funny that both programs are in similar positions right now, right? The quarterback, they have 50 new players. We have 45 new. So there's a lot of finding each other and getting the rhythm. So we'll see what happens. It is Braden Shager who will start here today. His first start since the opener. Second year in the program for Hawaii. Sophomore out of Dallas. Was really good against the Aggies a year ago in Honolulu. It's Diedrich Parson in the backfield with Shager. This Hawaii offense only averaging 15 points per game. And it's a delay of game to start for the Rainbow Warriors. Prior to the expiration of the play clock, Hawaii is called the first time out of the half. 30 second time out. All right, so Hawaii did get a timeout right before the delay of game, so that could have been really, really costly early on for the Rainbow Warriors. You don't want a delay of game ever, Danny, but especially out of the shoot. Yeah, that's right. So you have to burn a timeout so you don't get a penalty and start first and 15 at your first possession. That'd be really hard for, for programs that are struggling offensively to get going here. So you had to call a timeout. I'm not sure what the miscues were on why you couldn't get in. A little bit of crowd noise, but not sure. Maybe it's just coordination isn't there yet. Shager, 41 of 69 this year for 398. No passing touchdowns for either of the two quarterbacks yet this year for the Rainbow Warriors. So they have to burn an early timeout before the first play from scrimmage. Shager, pump fakes, rolls right, being chased by Lazarus Williams, and he fires and it's caught. That was James Phillips sneaking behind the Aggie linebacker, Trevor Brohard. Aggies almost got to Shager, but it's a big game for Phillips on first down, a gain of 24. You know, scrambling, the hardest thing to do is when a quarterback staff starts scrambling is to stay with your receiver. So you got to stay with your receiver, stay in your zone, know where the guy is. And in this case, he got a little deep on Trevor, and he just couldn't get his big arm up there to tip that thing. Once again, Parson in the backfield with Shager. Throws left, and it's caught. That is Dior Scott, who's wrestled out of bounds by Cyrus Dumas, the Aggie cornerback, a gain of four. Cyrus Dumas had a nice interception last week, so here it is just a quick toss outside there. Cyrus comes up on it quickly ball. and just pushes on him. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense, number six. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So, Danny, that was a late hit on Cyrus Dumas. Yeah. And those penalties, that's what Jerry Kill's been talking about. It's been poor football as far as discipline for the Aggies, and that is not Jerry Kill kind of football. Yeah, you know, the hard thing, too, though, Adam, is that he keeps pressing you've got to play harder, faster, bigger, stronger, and sometimes you just overdo it. In that case, he just overdid it. He knew it. He said it was me. Carson running straight up the gut. Down to the 25-yard line. He's having a good year. His 52nd carry this year. He's almost run for 200 yards. Yeah, he's a tough one. And I know in our open, we talked about uh, Bryce um, also playing at UNLV facing him last year. He says, man, he's got a little, little pep to him. Little, uh, He's a good running back, so really look for a lot of Parsons today. Parson motions to the left to the quarterback, Shager, making his first start since the opener. Ojo almost got to him. The pass is caught underneath by Caleb Phillips. His fourth catch this year. Rainbow Warriors really banged up at wide receiver, so we're probably going to see the tight ends, Murray and Phillips, a lot here in this game. So first and 10 for Hawaii from the 16-yard line. Good opening drive for Shager after the early timeout out of the gate. 
Phillips lined up at tight end. They'll run it with Parson. He shimmies through the gap in the defense up front. He's taken down by Bryce Jackson. His 27th tackle this year. Tops on the Aggies. It's a gain of seven for Deidre Parson. And you can see what they're doing up there. They're just pushing everyone down and kind of a stretch play and running to the back side since it's open. And, and the good thing Bryce was there to make that tackle. Good sure tackle. Tight end, Jordan Murray lined up at wide receiver on the top side of your screen. We were told before the game Murray would be used as a wide receiver because of all the injuries. Parson breaks the tackle again, and he crawls down to the five-yard line. He's shifty, Danny. You have to really hit him to hit him on the initial stop. Yeah, you know, you, you have to hit him, and you have to hold on, because if you don't, he will spin. And so the big thing is here, first contact, you have to hold on. You see down there trying to grab a leg, and I think that was uh, Linwood that's down there trying to grab a leg and hang on. But the first guy there, grab something, do not let go, help is coming. And you got to dig your heels in here near the goal line. From the five-yard line, first down and goal for Hawaii. Down to the one-yard line is Najee bryant Lele. his first carry. He picks up four, junior out of Orlando. Yeah, no, as long as they are owning that line of scrimmage, and you can see right there that everyone is accounted for, and they really own that line of scrimmage, you're going to continue to pour that in there. It's a good thing uh, Dylan Early was there to make that tackle. Already four first downs on this opening drive for Hawaii. Parson is back in. Tight end is Phillips, and it is Parson right up the gut, and he runs it in from one yard away. Dietrich Parson, his fifth rushing touchdown this year, his third in the previous two games. I know, now I know Hawaii hasn't thrown a touchdown all year long, but if you can run the ball like they have this whole first series, you don't need to throw it. And so what happens is if you start establishing that run, the Aggies are going to have to squeeze down on that, and then that opens the pass. But that was just a, a tough first series uh, for the Aggies defense. Point after from Matthew Shipley. And it's good. So it was a poor start for Hawaii. They had to burn a timeout before their first play from scrimmage. But the Rainbow Warriors marched down the field. A play, 75 yards. It covers 305. And it's a one yard touchdown and a run for Parson. His 13th career rushing touchdown at Hawaii. He was really good during that drive. Yeah, that was, that was a good drive all the way around. So let's look at it right there. Look up front. Let's look and see how the offense is blocking up there. Everyone is accounted for, and they created a hole. And you can see that just you didn't really have to shimmy too, too much because it was just a divide that they created. And that means that defensive line is being stood up. And, and if they stand up that defensive line, they're going to put them on the skates and push them backwards. So it really needs some adjustments up front there. It is time to start dialing up a few blitzes, a, a few uh, stunts in there to really keep everyone off guard up front there. But that was just a good drive. That was a solid drive. Aggie defense has to figure out a way to stop that run. Clearly a lot of confidence in the defense right now with Aggie head coach Jerry Kill. The Aggies won the toss, but they chose to kick even though they won the toss and the defense struggled there in the opening drive. So Hawaii taking full advantage. Tyler Halverson handles the kickoff for Hawaii. Jonathan Brady watches it trickle through the end zone. And we'll send it down to the third member of our crew, Andy Morgan, for more on the Aggie quarterback situation. Yeah, Adam, it's been a little bit of a learning curve for this New Mexico State team through the first quarter of the season under head coach Jerry Kill in his first year, particularly at the quarterback position, as you have mentioned at the top of this broadcast. you got Diego Pavia as well as Gavin Frakes. Expect both of these guys to play here tonight in this game as they have in each of the first four games of the season for the Aggies. They battled all all week in competition, all week in practice, and while Kill wasn't, didn't go as far to name a starter in this game, expect him to go at least with the hot hand in this one as they develop uh, some chemistry, and you definitely know that uh, Pavia, he can beat you with his arm, and Frakes definitely has the ability as the drop back passer to beat you with his arm. Thank you, Andy. It is Gavin Frakes who gets the start at quarterback, and it's Jonathan Brady who we profiled during the open, gets that jet sweep, Danny. The Aggies are going to try to get the ball in the hands of Brady early and often here tonight. Yeah, you know, we saw this similar play at UTEP where he had two big plays where he broke for 50 yards. He's a playmaker. If you get the ball in his hands, a lot of things can happen. And so, yeah, jet sweep, sweep open it up, trying to get the defense to spread just a little bit more and allow some running lanes. A couple yards shy of the first down there on the carry from Brady, his fourth carry this year. 
for 54 yards. Breaking a tackle is Jamani Jones, and he barrels across midfield into Hawaii territory. A gain of 18 for Jones. Yeah, sorry, I'm so set it up, right? So you do the jet sweep, you spread the defense out. It's like, okay, let's loosen up a little bit because we don't know what's going to happen. So once they're open a little bit more, you get good blocking lanes for the offensive line. You can see the hole Official right there. Timeout for an injured player. And Jamani Jones just pours it in there. Great big hole, offensive line, all the all the props right there. That's a great job. That is safety, Kaulana McCaula, who's down for Hawaii. We'll step aside from Aggie Memorial. This is Amate Watkins running left, trying to find the edge. The speedster out of Houston. And he gets the Aggies another first down here on their opening drive. Yeah, nice run right there. Come back out in a pistol, and you have Jamani as a lead blocker there. And you just kind of be a quick sweep to your our left, right on the screen here. You get that, that little chip block there. I think Amante is not the guy they want to break loose because that speedster can take it to the house in no time. Gain of 13 for Watkins, the transfer from TCU. Pistol back here is Jones. Rolling right is Franks. Has a really good arm, and his pass is dropped by Eric Marsh, who was looking for his first catch this year. I think we're going to see the tight ends, Danny Marsh and Jones and Whitford, used a little more going forward. Yeah, I think so, and I, I like the tight end play, too, because it means you have to have a backer, you have to have a strong stick, you have to have someone spying him all the, all the while, and they did in this case, but if they don't, that could be a big play. And we have some very talented tight ends. I just like the tight end play. Aggies have had a huge issue early on this year, the first four games with drops, and that was a drop from Marsh. Whitford lined up as a wide receiver here. The Aggies go with the jet sweep. It's Brady again, and there you see that blazing speed from Brady, who is across the 30, down to the 29. He gets seven. Come back out, and what do you do? You open it up. You have no one in the backfield. You spread them out completely. And so you have to go out and respect that. In doing so, it creates lanes, and Jonathan Brady showing his speed again. Aggies really go into that jet sweep early with Brady. Probably see Watkins and Parker used in that scenario as well. Start to Thomas now in it running back. Coming off a team high 46 rushing yards in the loss last week at Wisconsin. It was Whitford in motion. Here's Thomas is the big back, about 235 pounds, and he gets that first down easily. It's just over five into this first quarter. You know, you get you give Thomas just a little hole, and he can get it done at six foot two twenty five. He can put his shoulder down and can level you. So it's you can't really get underneath. You really want to get underneath a running back to bring him down. But with Star Thomas being so low to the ground, it makes it very hard to bring him down. Nice hard running. He had a great week last week running. It sure looked like he had the first down. The Aggies did not get a good spot here. So it's fourth and a short one. Aggies will go for it. Thomas again. First down and more. Star Thomas is gone. Touchdown, Aggie. Just what the doctor ordered. Bring everyone up. Fourth and short. They're, they're saying, we're going to stuff you. Offensive line steps up, creates a crease. That's all Star Thomas needs. And he takes it the whole look. And everyone just crushed down. We had a great push out block at the end there. There's no one left. There's no one in level two or three. Star just walks into the walks into the end zone. Big back out of Homer, Louisiana, listed 225, probably more like 230 or 235. Had the best week of any Aggie running back a week ago. Team leader in rushing yards, and he punches it in for the, the first rushing touchdown in his Aggie career. Point after for Brett Money, the new Aggie kicker. Star Thomas, six rushing touchdowns. Touchdowns in six games a year ago at Coffeeville Juco. He ties us up at seven. Six minutes in here at Aggie Memorial. Jerry Kill said they're going to play Jerry Kill football, which usually means run the football. And the Aggies had 67 rushing yards total in that first drive. Here you see Brett Money, number 29 in Crimson. He just kicked off. He's been handling the kickoffs now and the extra points. Presumably he will handle the the field goals as well. The Aggies currently having a kicking issue with Ethan Alberton, who has struggled this year. So this week in practice, it was Brett Money and also Carson Zilmer.
middling field goals, and we'll see if uh, the Aggies will use money or if they use Zilmer if they get a field goal attempt here tonight. Pedrick Parson was really good during that opening drive at running back for Hawaii. Four carries for 17 yards. Shager will throw, and he overthrows his tight end, Phillips. Cyrus Dumas almost had an interception, but it drops incomplete. Well, the Aggies come back out, and they're playing that base defense, which is a 4-2-5 defense that Coach Drilling has bought here. And back in the back, you can see him sitting in the zone. He gets right in the crease, right in between two people there. That's early with the, with the big shoulder pop right there. And so he'll know from now on, don't come in my zone. There'll be someone out here that's going to pop you. Cyrus Dumas, interception last week, almost had one early on here tonight. Good pressure for the Yankees. Dump off goes to Parson. And he's wrestled down immediately as he only picks up three. Parson is used in the passing game as well. That's his eighth catch this year. Chris Ojo coming screaming in here, but the first thing is, as coach just dialed, uh, dialed up some blitzing and stunts up front, trying to keep everyone off guard, so he brings everyone. That just leaves Chris Ojo back there. He comes screaming in and makes a sure tackle. Third down and seven. Hawaii really banked up at wide receiver this week. Dealing with numerous injuries. And the pass is out of the reach of James Phillips, one of their healthy targets, who is second on the team this year in catches. You know, Adam, when I spoke with the Coach Trilling uh, this week, I said, well, what is it that you try to do to the quarterbacks? I try to guess what you're doing, and sometimes I just can't guess. And he's like, that's exactly right. I try to make it very uncomfortable so they're not sure where I'm coming from because I'm going to come and I'm going to mix it up. So if they're uncomfortable back there, that plays into what I like to do defensively, which makes sense. Hey, Dryland, one of the youngest coordinators around the country. His defense gets a three and out from Hawaii. Lawrence Dixon handles the punt, and his return goes for about a yard, past the 35 up to the 36. Yeah, Adam, one of the bright spots for this New Mexico State team has been the defense under defensive coordinator Nate Dryland who's just 31 years old. In fact, he's part of a coaching staff that is the fourth youngest coaching staff in the entire nation. And when you got a staff like that and you got youth on the staff, you can expect a lot of energy, just like we've seen on this Aggie defense that has kept them in games against UTEP as well as Nevada. And after that first drive and, and uh, scoring drive for Hawaii, uh, New Mexico State really putting the clamps there on defense, forcing a three and out. Thank you, Andy. There's a look at Cherry Kim. Hill in his first year looking for his first win as the Yankee head coach. His offense only averaging eight points per game. Now the competition has been grueling so far this year. Going up against two of the best defenses around the country from a year ago with Minnesota and Wisconsin. Almost 70 rushing yards on their first series. There's Jumani Jones who had his longest run of the year earlier. And a run of 18 as previous long this year was only 12. This one goes for a handful. The Aggies come out here and we have a two tight ends set to your right. And it's just a rush. It's just bring it. We're going to line it up over there and block you. You're going to try to stop us. And, and we're still managing to get four, five, six yards to run. So I think that's just what coach is going to pull up. He's going to say, look, I'm running. And unless you stop me, I'm going to keep running. This Aggie offensive line dealing with injuries just like the Rams. The Warriors receiver core. A lot of youth from the Aggie O line right now. The Aggie stretch it out for Jones. He bounces to the outside, lowers his shoulders, and creeps a little closer to the yardage he needed. needed. He only picks up three. It's going to bring up third down and short. Why well, bring a little pressure? So they know we're going to run, so certainly they're going to start stepping up a little closer, a little closer. We're going to go a little tempo here. Aggies will throw it on third down. Caught by Bryce. Childress, and he gets the first down into Rainbow Warrior territory. That's only the third catch this year for the St. Louis, Missouri native. I like the tempo. I like Coach Beck coming out here saying, look, we're, we're a little short. Hawaii, number one, lost his helmet during the play. He must go out for one down. I like the tempo where Coach Beck is saying, look, we're close. I know what I'm going to call right away. Let's get the play in and let's get going. I think that really keeps the defense on their heels. That's team captain, linebacker Panay Pabihi. 
who has to go off for one play after losing his helmet. Two running backs set, Jones and Star Thomas. Thomas will block for Jamani Jones, and the Rainbow Warriors not fooled one bit. Coming up from his linebacker spot is Jonah Kahaha Y. Welch, the senior from Kailua, Oahu. Nice, Adam. That was a good job right there in the presentation. So we're going to run the ball until they stop it. So now they stopped it, but here's what happens. You have to decide whether you're going to come up and play run, and if you do, that's going to start opening up the pass. Now we know we know that Gavin's got a great arm, so you would look for that to take a shot. No gain on the previous play. Second down at 10. Two running backs set again. This time Franks will pull it and keep it. We're having Franks get a run. And finally, he's taken down from behind by Noah Kamana. Gavin Franks using his legs for 17 yards. That's a nice read right there. I thought they were going to be in a one-on-one -on -one position situation at the top of the screen. So I thought he'd step up and throw it, but he had the blocking there. There's only one other guy that was out in front there, and he just motored out there and got some nice yardage. That's a veteran move there to pull it that late by Gavin Frakes, making just his second start during his true freshman year. Out of Norman, Oklahoma, Norman North High School. Tight end, J.J. Jones in motion. Pistol back is Jones. Give his to Jamani Jones, and he will shimmy ahead past the 25. Down to the 24, he gets four. You know, Gavin um, ran the same similar offense in offense as RPO, so he's familiar. He had some big yardage in, in high school. So to see him run, a little surprised, but shouldn't be because he, he ran for a big yardage in high school. So we know he's got wheels, and he can get it done running if he needs to. Star Thomas again almost found a hole, and he's down to the 20, so he's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. Third down and short. Boy, you see a load, Danny. He's a bowling ball, isn't he? About he, 230 he is. pounds. And he gets into the hole, and the offensive line, when, they, when they're when they in that case, they had great blocking up front, and they created a nice hole. He's get a, a running start to it, which makes him very difficult to bring down. If you step up in that hole and you see a big bowling ball coming your way, you better stay low and hang on. Aggies need the 18-yard line. Franks will keep it again. Gavin Franks calls his own number. His first career rushing touchdown. Aggies in front early. Nice keep by Gavin. It had everyone fooled. I was a little bit confused up front here, too. So he's reading. He's seen everyone go off and try to chase down the running back. And he rides it hard and pulls it out the last second, and there's no one there because everyone took the fake, and uh, he just walked in and for a touchdown. Playing like a veteran early here in the first quarter. Two possessions offensively, two touchdowns for the Aggie offense, and Brett Money is on the money once again on the point after. That was impressive. Gavin Frakes twice on big plays, choosing to pull it, run it, He's 6'4", 215, but he can scamper with his legs. Yeah, he, he really had a good fake in there because he rode that fake so long in there. And, and part of that is that if you establish the running game, once you get that running game going, you have to honor that. So if you're a linebacker, you have to be flowing hard and fast to the right because you don't know if they're going to get the corner. And if they get the corner, they're gone. And in this case, he rode that fake all the way there, saw that everyone was taking the running fake, kept it himself straight up the middle. Great blocking again up front. Nice job there, coach. Gavin Franks enrolled early back in January. He decommitted from Princeton. Initially, he was going to Princeton. He had offers from Penn and Yale. A very bright young man. And he was going to Princeton, decommitted, enrolled early. And that was huge to get his knowledge of the offense and get acclimated to the college games. So he went through spring ball. And he's played a lot early on this year but he's trying to grab hold of that starting position. Jalen Purdue will take a knee. Jerry Kill has said, Danny, that he thought by now somebody would have taken hold of that starting yep. spot at QB. Yeah, I, I agree, Adam. And you know, I, when I spoke with Coach Beck, I said, what about that? How come we don't have anyone? And he said, you know, I just there's no rhythm. How do I make a choice 
of who I'm going to go with when you play some of the big schools that you have and you just don't have a rhythm. So I don't know who the guy is. Well, I think he's starting to find out who that guy just might be. Ten yards per run so far for the Aggies. Rushing touchdowns for Star Thomas and the quarterback, Kevin Fricks. Braden Shager making just his second start this year for Hawaii. Running back here is Najee bryant Lay, who picks up four yards. Hawaii will use three or four backs. Diedrich Parson will get the bulk of the carries. A lot of carries this year for this man, Najee bryant Lay, And then Tylan Hines and Jordan Johnson used a little bit in the first four games. bryant Lelay, the running back here. We'll give it to him. He angles off to the right, breaks a couple of tackles, and it's near first down yardage. She's going to be about a yard shy, maybe a yard and a half shy of the yardage needed. I thought, I thought Gabe uh, Peterson should have had him there, 49, coming across. He was sliding down there from that stud position we call, which is that stand up, stand up the end dish, and I thought he had him a little earlier than he. Third down and a long one. Hawaii 33% on third down this year. Shanger with time to throw. Pressure came. Segura almost got to him. And Shanger will use his legs to get first down yardage near the 40. Justin Segura almost grabbed his ankles. So keeping him uncomfortable back there. He's certainly looking around. No one's there. We missed a couple. Maybe we should have had it. But that was a good scramble. And then once you do that, you have everyone that's deep past. Pass route coverage, and then you have linebackers in the blitz, and there's no one in that middle zone right there, which he takes advantage of. Shager started the opener this year against Vanderbilt. He's been off the bench in two of the previous three. He unloads here across the middle. It's Parson, his second catch. We saw Diedrich Parson a lot last year when the Aggies played the Rainbow Warriors twice. He ran all over the Aggies last year in Honolulu. Had a couple of rushing touchdowns in that game. Had three to be exact last year in Honolulu. Those were the numbers coming in for Shaker. Hawaii still looking for their first passing touchdown as a team this year. Shaker will throw again. Lobs this one downfield. Good coverage there from Linwood Crump as Shaker overthrows his target. Yeah, not a lot happening there, and I think part of that um, is that you have to hurry the quarterback just a bit, and so if you have a good rush on, you, you don't, can't get comfortable back there, and you have to let that thing go before you maybe want to. So nice pressure by the Aggies that are really keeping uh, Braden kind of jumping around a bit. Hawaii needs their own 49-yard line. They're one for two tonight on a third down. Three out wide, running back, Parson. And the play is, the play is blown down. Ball start. Off seven, five, we'll see, third down. You know, Adam, I think what happens is, as the Aggies come out, they have a three-man front. And as he's looking down there, all of a sudden, Timer, we set the game clock to one, six. You can see the linebacker stepping up quickly on the left side of the screen there. So you have Peterson, you have um, our middle linebacker coming up in there, and that makes everyone jump just a little bit because now their assignments just changed just a little bit. That was on right tackle, Austin Hop. So it's a five-yard penalty. It should be third down and 10 for Hawaii. No Jonah Pinoke, the top wide receiver this year for the Rainbow Warriors. He's out with an injury that occurred last week. Shager on third and ten. Chris Ojo gets him from behind. Second sack this year for the transfer from Eastern Washington. Well, coach keeps him guessing. He keeps disguising. We have all our linebackers going. Trevor threw a little, little disguise. He comes in there. Chris Ojo finishes it. But there's nothing to do. Lots of pressure. Assignments that are being missed up front. Good, good stuff right there on the defense. That is sack number six in five games this year for the Aggies defensively. They nearly blocked the punt. 
from Shibley. Their catch is called for and handled by Lawrence Dixon. So after the first possession, defensively, it's been all good for the Aggies here in the first quarter. Two really good offensive possessions and now two really good defensive possessions. Yeah, no doubt about it. So Coach Dryland is already making the adjustments on that first drive with Hawaii. They had uh, four first downs, but since then he's really changed it up. I think he's put more pressure on, and dialing up more pressure makes makes the quarterbacks a little bit uncomfortable back there because you don't know where they're coming from. Does a great job of disguise. Now let's see if the if the offense can give us some more points, get a little cushion. Aggies have already run for 120 yards. Frakes has only thrown three passes, two for three for 19 yards. Your star Thomas again. Big hole for Thomas across midfield. It's a foot race for star Thomas. Look at hit job. Drags tacklers inside the red zone. The bowling ball, huge gain on first down. You know, when you're a defensive back and you have someone like that coming at you, and you just try to say, let's look at the line first of all. Look at the line up front. Look at the hole that they was that we was able to run through. But when you get to be in the backfield and you're trying to bring a big hoss down like that with just arm tackles, it's just no way. He's just too much of a moose just to, just to give way just because you want to arm tackle him. Great play all the way around. 56-yard explosion for Star Thomas. He ran in a score earlier. Thomas off the right hip of Frakes. The give is to Jamani Jones. Nope, it's Frakes. He pulls it. He keeps it. And he is bumped. He's trying to reach for the pylon. And he's going to be out of bounds near the five-yard line. Another good pull late by Gavin Franks, who gets eight yards. Gavin, he's got a little juice right there. Adam looks like he, he kept that one, and he's going to keep it around the right side of the screen. You see there, missed the tackle, stepped through that one, stepped through that one as well, and he knew where he was, just had to stay inbounds. Oh, just couldn't quite do it. Gavin running that offense to perfection. Jamani Jones to the right of Frakes. They give it to Jones, trying to push the pile. And Jones is inside the five-yard line. He gets a couple down to the three, and that's the end of one quarter. And it was a good first quarter for the Aggies. They're marching down again. Just get the ball to Star Thomas. He's been outstanding through 15 minutes of play. 14 to seven Aggies looking for more and looking for their first win this year. Ball is on the three yard line. Four carries for 91 yards so far for Star Thomas. It's Jamani Jones who is in it running back. Heavy package for the Aggies with J.J. Jones at tight end. And it's Jamani Jones who sneaks in. Touchdown Aggies. Their third rushing touchdown in the first quarter plus. Adam, I, I just can't say enough of good things about that offensive line up front there. You know, Coach Mitchell has done just a, a fabulous job coming off some big games. But look up front there. Look at him get the push. And, of course, Jamani Jones, is, is he's in there pushing as well. But without that one, two-yard push by that offensive line, Jones doesn't get in. That offensive line, I just, just great stuff he's done coming off Wisconsin, right? Yep. You go from Wisconsin to this, nicely job. Andrew Mitchell, the O-line coach. Jerry Kill has raved about him. He's teaching every single day. Rushing touchdowns for Thomas, Frakes, and now Jamani Jones. The first as an Aggie for Jones, the transfer from Northeastern Oklahoma, A&M Junior College. Danny, how about this stat coming in? The Aggies had been outscored in the first half this year, 93-2, including 76-2 in the second quarter of games. They lead 21 to 7 and three seconds into quarter two. You know, nothing like that to helps confidence a little bit, Adam. You know, as I talked to Coach Beck, the offensive coordinator, he said, you know, I want so much for these guys to have some success because we push them hard. We work them hard in practice. And if they could just experience some of the success that comes from that hard work, I think they would really start to say, yeah, we can do this. This is something we can do. And this is a good start to that. Four plays, 70 yards, covering only a minute 16. Results in the three-yard touchdown run for Jones. And everybody's happy, too, because Jones is getting carries. Thomas is getting carries. Brady's active. 
Amante Watkins is active. It's been a collective effort so far as Brett Money's kick is returnable. This is Jalen Purdue. Good field position. Good decision yeah. by Purdue to take it out up to the 35-yard line. Check at the 25-yard line for him. There is a flat down on the play. As Wade the Wonder Dog retrieves the tee. During the return, holding number 17 of the receiving team. To the distance to the goal, first down. All right, so that will push back the Hawaii offense, which was good early and then struggled in the previous two series. The big reason why they have struggled, Danny, has been the Aggie defense. You know, ever since that first series where they had so many first downs in March down the field, I think Coach has really mixed it up quite a bit. He's brought a lot of pressure, brought the, brought the linebackers. He's seen Chris Ojo in there. Trevor has been all over him. Let's see what he can dial up this time around. Braden Schenger is still in at quarterback. Diedrich Parson, second effort. And Parson has a first down. He's tough. He's not big. He's 5'8", 205. But like Star Thomas, he's able to still get yardage after the initial hit. Now he, he kind of gets lost in everything right there. And everyone's up. And he just sneaks right through there and gets into that second level in a hurry. And there's some jumping up front. It looks like it's the Aggies. Isaiah Reed, big number 98. Snap infraction, offense wow. number 61, penalty, first down. All right, so that's why Reed was jumping. It's on Iliki Tanuvasa, the team captain in center. Snap infraction for Hawaii. Let's see if we can see it. It's right there in the middle of the screen. There it is right there, a little flinch of the arm, like a fake almost snap. So it looked like Reed, but it wasn't Reed. It's on Tanuvasa. Jager back to throw on first down. Caught. James Phillips. A couple catches for him here in the first half. Crump and Jack alone right there for the tackle. Aggie defense allowing 37 points per game so far this year, but it's skewed a bit because of the 66 allowed against Wisconsin a week ago. Here's Parson. He's shifty. Maneuvers, angles towards the numbers, and gets all the way down to the 35-yard line. Gain of 17. A first down for the Rainbow Warriors. Now we're up on the line of scrimmage. Have us some linebackers up in there, and you see everyone that climbs in there, and it just allows them to wall everyone off and to get to that second level because there's no one left. The backers are up. Parson, a transfer from Howard University in Washington, D.C. Second year for him at Hawaii. And it's been two good years. Here's Bryant Lillet, and he drags Bryce Jackson a couple extra yards. Jackson, the top tackler this year for the Aggies. That was actually Tylen Hines. Check that. That was Hines, the freshman from Mount Pleasant, Texas. His first carry here tonight. The Warriors will use three or four running backs. Hines again running horizontally, has a burst of speed, only has one man to beat, and he's pushed out of bounds by Jackson after he snuck by Dylan early. I think the I think Hawaii's just said, you know, we're not we're not going to try to do anything fancy anymore. We're going to go back to that first series, and we're just going to line up there and come at you. In this case, it's going to be a little stretch play. They get the corner, they run past Trevor, and now it's just a foot race. It's a good thing Bryce took the right angle to the tackle, so he, he was aiming deep and was able to push him out of bounds. Otherwise, he would have walked that one right on in. That was a 37-yard run for the freshman Hines. Najee bryant Lillet back in at running back. Jager will pull it, run pass option. He throws it towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. Flag comes in. Linwood Crump in coverage. Jordan Murray, the tight end, who's playing at wide receiver here tonight, was the intended receiver. You know, part of the problem is, is that you have uh, 
You have Murray. You have Murray at 6'5". Up a Pass interference. Defense number nine. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So you have Linwood at 5'11", five, five, going against Murray, 6'5", and they're just trying to get that ball up in the air as a deep kind of uh, fade route uh, since it's a nice one-on-one -on -one matchup. And in this case, they got a little handsy there. Yeah, that's a huge, huge mismatch there. Murray has had a good start to the year after transferring in from FCS Missouri State. Parson back in it, running back. He will take the handoff, and he is smothered. That is Justin Segura on the Aggie D-line. Redshirt junior from the Phoenix area in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's a nice job by Justin right there. Let's watch him in the middle there. Gets rid of this block in a hurry. No one left, so he just scurries right down the line of scrimmage and makes that tackle. That's a loss of two. So now it's second and goal from the eight. Two and a half tackles for loss now this year for Segura. Shager sidesteps, he runs, and he's tackled from behind by Chris Ocho. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's third and goal coming up. One more, got to dig your heels in there. Chris Ocho, I can't say enough about the, about the, about trying to get in there. So he's in the backfield, and now he's got to go back around and make the tackle so he doesn't get into the end zone. Chris did a great job there. Nice effort, staying with it. Jager, the quarterback, his second start this year. And a timeout is called by the Aggies. Timeout, New Mexico State, their first church timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Jerry killed Danny, talked a lot this week about third down on offense and third down on defense. If the Aggies can hold Hawaii to a field goal try here, that could be huge. And that's a success for sure. And I think this is a good timeout because you have, you're able to get down this far and say, okay, fine, let's call a timeout. Let's think about what we're doing. Let's get the right personnel in there and really hold them. The responsible gaming association of New Mexico, the state's Native American owned casinos, working together to offer free and confidential resources for the prevention, education, and treatment of problem gambling. Learn more at rganm.org. Glad you're with us here tonight. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Andy Morgan's on our sidelines. Both teams started this season in week zero, so game five for both. Hawaii one and three, the Aggies 0 and four. Big third and goal right here. Shager looking right, he throws right, and he airmails his intended receiver. He was looking for Jalen Walthall, the freshman from Houston. That was good coverage right there, but he was open if he could get, get the ball in there, but just couldn't quite make it happen. So nice stop for the Aggies on third down. Matthew Shipley, a very good kicker, comes on. He handles the punts and the field goals for Hawaii. Junior out of Liberty Hill, Texas. Four for five this year with a long of 40, which he's done twice this year. This one from 23 yards. And the kick is good. But that's a win for the Aggie defense. It was first and goal for Hawaii. The Aggies hold the Rainbow Warriors to a field goal. 21 to 10. The Aggie offense back to work after this. And Holman Rowe. Excited to see this Aggie offense again, Danny. They're humming right now. They are, and I think with the defense holding the three there, let's see if the, uh, the offense can put a big, long drive again together and put some more points on the board. We haven't seen that in a while. It's a big dose of run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Not much passing, but if you don't have to, why throw it? The Aggies have scored on all three offensive possessions so far. Seven plays, 75 yards, eight plays, 64 yards, and four plays, 70 yards. And they're going to start at the 25-yard line once again. In case you're just joining us, Kevin Franks is making his second career start. True freshman from Norman, Oklahoma. And he has made 
Good decision after good decision. He's only thrown the ball three times. And Andrew Mitchell's offensive line has helped the Aggies run for 190 so far on the ground. Coach Mitchell right there, he is the offensive line coach who has just had his hands full, but he's really put a great product out on the field today. This time the running back is Amate Watkins, the transfer from TCU. Trying to bounce it to the outside, he does. Good pick up here on first down for Watkins. Up near the 30, he gets four. Jones and Thomas Danny, those are the two big backs, and Watkins is the speedster. Watkins is the speedster, so get, if he gets to the edge, he turned right there, that could be gone. No one's going to catch him for sure. Watkins was a high school four-star from Houston out of Klein Forest High School. He stays in here at running back. Tight end is J.J. Jones, wing left. Watkins up the middle, and he is stuffed immediately by the big linebacker, Isaiah Tufanga. Transfer from Oregon State. And Watkins only gets one. Not a lot happening there. I think this play action that we're running, I think they've said, okay, we're starting to understand you're going to go play action and just run it up the gut or take it around the side there. Let's see what they dial up this time. I would be surprised if we're going to see Gavin's arm here. He's only had to throw the ball three times so far. Cordell David, the top receiver this year in motion. Breaks, throws it behind, oh. just as Powers. He had him. The Powers a little too far in front of it. So now the Aggies will have to punt for the first time tonight. Josh Carlson's been busy, the Aggie punter this year, but this is the first three and out. This little slant pattern that Powers is running right across the middle. You can see that it's wide open right there. The throw a little bit behind, but if you get, the, get your hands on it from a receiver standpoint, maybe you should be able to bring that down. It would have been nice to have that slant. Josh Carlson's been a mainstay the last couple of years. Hawaii did block a punt a week ago against Duquesne in their win. This one takes a really good Aggie bounce. Dior Scott, the return man, has to let it roll out near the 15-yard line. That'll go down as a boomer for Josh Carlson. Torin Union will touch it. A punt of 54 for Carlson. A new season high for him. We're back after this to Aggie Memorial. Thank you, Andy. All sideline reports brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. And Jerry Kill said this week that he's told his players these next eight games, the eight games left during the regular season, he's told them this is an eight-game playoff. And that's the way he wants his players to look at it. You can't play for a conference championship, Danny, as an independent. So you have to play for something. And he said this is an eight-game playoff the rest of the way. Yeah, you know, he has a lot of uh, motivation. So he pushes his guys hard. He gives them something to aim for. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to say, here's what we're all about. Here's what our what we're going to look like from a, from a uh, position standpoint. Go get it. Only one yard in the previous run for freshman Highland Hines. Shager alone thrower in second down. Good catch by the tight end Caleb Phillips, the transfer from Stanford, who we thought would be used more here tonight because of all the injuries at wide receiver, and we've been right. He's been targeted a bunch for Hawaii. Third down and short coming up. Just a quick toss to the outside. Going to run a quick out route there. Aggies are back in the zone, and he's just going to catch the underneath route and get as many yards as he can. This is Hines. Oh, he man. is stuffed. Oh, that man. is Malachi McLean. The freshman safety Screaming up. He hasn't played a ton this year, but makes a big play on third down. I think Coach saw that there's going to be a run, and he brought everyone. He brought the house, so you can see everyone kind of sneaking up in there. Just great tackle right there, just screaming in the backfield. Malachi out of Manville, Texas, a, uh, a town that has produced so many athletes, Danny, over the years. Not a big town, but a really good sports town in Manville, Texas. Lawrence Dixon back deep to re return the punt from Shipley, and he calls for a fair catch at the 32-yard line. 44-yard boot for Shipley midway through quarter two here in the Southwest. 
Danny, he knew that he had really good running backs, and it's hard to gauge where they're at when you're playing Wisconsin and Minnesota and, and all those kind of schools they played so far. So this this has been a breakout game that Tim Beck thought was coming for Thomas Jones and others. And, you know, when I talked to Coach Beck, I said, well, who's the guy? You know, you got this guy, and you have this guy, and we got a running back here, and he said, you know, I like them all. We got a great running back set, and I can go to anyone. I just want those guys to be successful so they know there's something for the effort. Jet sweep again for Brady. This was used a lot early in the game, and this time the Rainbow Warriors able to sniff it out. Mackey Pay makes the tackle. He was ejected a week ago in the first half for targeting, but since it was half one, he's good to go here tonight. You know, Coach Beck talked about a lot of having a lot of young players and uh, a lot of analogies from some of the stops he's made along the way at Pittsburgh State in particular. He had a lot of great stories that said, you know, this is really what, it, what it's about. So it's going to be this year, and those young players are going to make an impact into next year and beyond. Pistol back, Star Thomas. Tight end is J.J. Jones. He makes the catch, and the tackle is made in the backfield for Hawaii. So they were all over it. The Aggies faked the run, and J.J. Jones is tackled for a loss. Play action, so you have guys going everywhere, and everyone is accounted for, and uh, not being tricked one single bit. That was Mekki Pei again, the sophomore from Honolulu. Transfer from Washington. A lot of power five transfers for first year Rainbow Warriors head coach Timmy Chang, a former star quarterback for Hawaii in the early 2000s. Frank's back to throw on third and 11. And the catch is made by Justice Powers. He's made some spectacular catches this year. Now, we know Gavin has a great arm. We saw it in spring ball. He had drilled one down the line, and it was just a fantastic arm. Same thing here. Powers gets behind the defender, but you still have to have a good throw. Lots of confidence in that throw. Right over top there, lays it in there enough that he can get underneath it and make a great catch, but not too much loft where the defender can get back around. That's just a great job. Powers, the biggest target for the Aggies at 6-4. That one goes for 28 yards. Thomas able to bounce it to the edge. So he can go straight up the gut, and then he can run towards the edge and find it with a burst, and he gets eight yards here. Second down and short. Five and change left in a really good offensive first half for Jerry Kill and the Aggies. Jerry Kill looking for his first win as the Aggie head coach. Whitford in motion. Give is to Thomas. Shimmy's through a hole again. And he's finally chopped down by Verdell Edwards, who might have saved a touchdown right there. Spreads him out again with a little play action and just hands the ball off instead of keeping it and just sneaks right in there. Another big hole up front there by that offensive line. Star Thomas well over 100 yards rushing right now. Frakes has only had to throw it six times. He's four for six for 43. No touchdowns, no picks. Frakes has the only Aggie pass he touched down in the first four games. And a timeout is called by Hawaii defensively. Hawaii has called their second charge timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Rainbow Warriors had to use a timeout before the first play from scrimmage. And now they burn their second here late in the first half. This is the way we thought it could go, Danny. We thought those first four weeks, you, you knew even if you played well, you could go 0-4. And now this is a very, very winnable stretch starting tonight. Yeah, you know, when I was talking to Coach Beck, I asked about those four games, Adam, and he said, you know, the ones I really concentrate on was UTEP and Nevada. He said, those are the ones I looked at and said, what can I clean up to be better at? The other ones, it's not going to happen. But from there, then that's the launching part going forward, and I like that approach. Sports Accessories is now the official licensed merchandise provider of the Aggies, and they have the best Aggie gear in town at the best price. Check out their showroom in Las Cruces, or visit the online store at theaggieshop.com. First and 10 from the 21. Tim Gans in at running back. Frakes will fake it 
to him, scans the field, throws, and it's out of the reach of Cordell David. It's dangerous. Now that we've seen Gavin run, we know he can take the ball and take it up the field, but also when he breaks when he breaks his area, he can throw the ball as well, so it's tough. you got to decide how you're going to play him. He ends the fourth running back the Aggies have put in the game here tonight. Jones, Thomas, Watkins, and Alkins, who ran well against Wisconsin a week ago. He's off the left tip of Freaks here. So Gans the running back, Jones the tight end, Franks will pull it, he throws, caught in stride by Justice Powers, and it's first in goal for the Aggies down at the two-yard line. And what a great job by Gavin. He sees a blitz coming, so he knows he has one play action, he pops up, he knows where he's going to go with the ball because he liked the matchup. We run the post by Powers. Powers has got the inside position. All he has to do is throw that thing right into his gut there, and he does a great job. Hang on to the football. We've had a lot of tips. Hang on to the football. Good position right here to put more points on the board. Second catch for Powers during this current drive. Aggies go to the Wildcat. Franks will motion out left. This is Jamani Jones in the Wildcat trying to plunge it in. Touchdown. The Aggies use the Wildcat, and it's Jamani Jones for the second time tonight. Jones getting help from the offensive line back there, but we get the Wildcat, break him out, spread out Gavin wide. It's like, okay, Jamani's getting the ball. What are you going to do? In this case, it's just line it up, toes to toes, nose to nose, and let's see who the bigger guy is there. Gets a little help from that offensive line, those big bubbles up front there. Push it across. Nice TD. Is that what they call big boy football? Dana? That is big boy football. That, that is fine big right boy there. football. Jamani Jones from two yards away. Point after Brett Money out of the hold of Josh Carlson. Good with 341 left here in quarter number two. My goodness. Aggies are running the football right at Hawaii and successfully here in this game tonight. They lead 28 to 10. Eight plays, 68 yards, covering 332. And Danny, I can really only think of one possession where the Aggies weren't very good offensively so far in the first half. Yeah, I, I think they, they have a lot going on, right? So you have a lot of passing, you have some great passing, running. We saw good running. I think when you have everything just working, it just builds confidence, and there's nothing you can't call on your sheet that says, hey, this can work. And that takes a oh, bad oh. Aggie bounce. So Hawaii will have this at the 35-yard line. Remember, the Aggies dealing Kicking with some kicking bounds. issues. Kicking team. The ball was placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And that, that was one of the positions, Danny, going into the year we were pretty sure about. Ethan Albertson has had a really good career with the Aggies and just got off to a really slow start the first four games. So Brett Money took over over kicking duties a week ago in the second half against Wisconsin and he's still a young kicker and this is potentially a costly mistake much better field position here for Hawaii Braden Shager is still the quarterback Shager running left Ojo will steer him out of bounds how about Ojo's speed right there so we're back in the zone. You got a four-man rush up front. See, Braden breaks the uh, pocket, scrambles around, and as he sees lots of green grass, you see Chris just come in there screaming up and shut that down in no time flat. I like the speed. I like the tempo of their play. Joey Yellen had started the previous three games for Hawaii, but it's Shager, his second start, his first since the opener against Vanderbilt. It's also been a tough schedule this year for Hawaii. They're coming off a win against FCS Duquesne. We'll see if that's a completed catch. They're going to rule it incomplete. Looks like Jordan Murray never had full control of it. Hawaii in a very similar Wait, position man. to the Aggies. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. We talked about this earlier. First year head coach, rebuild. But they've been to four straight bowl games, so you wouldn't think this is the kind of rebuild the Aggies are going through. Right. 
Talked about speed. Trevor Pearl hard with that last tackle. He came screaming in there and popped that ball out of there. Lots of speed. Lots of looks up there from defensively for the Aggies. Hawaii needs the 45. They're one for four on third down. Shager throwing deep. And it is caught. What a catch. That was Caleb Phillips. Thing. Quick toss by Shager throws it behind Phillips. Andre Selden, the nickelback. And Lazarus Williams, who's always all over the place right there in coverage. You know, this is one of those things where Coach kind of lines up everyone, and he brings people and drops other people out. In that case, he lines everyone up. Lazarus, the defensive end, he drops into coverage. So it makes it really hard for a quarterback to read, well, who is the coverage guy? Who's coming to get me? And that's the whole idea of this defense. It's like, just keep them guessing. Watch out for the tight end. Phillips is lined up to the right of the formation. Big number 85 in white. On a third and 10, the catch is made. Shy of the first down, though. Catch is made by Jalen Walthall. His first catch, gain of seven. They need to 10. Trying to get out there and get as many positive yards as possible so you can get closer to have a little uh, field goal at least to this and maybe put seven on the board, but we close in a hurry. Nice coverage by the Aggies. Here we go, fourth down. Looks like they're calling a timeout. Thought they were going to go for it. New Mexico State has called their second timeout of the 30-second timeout. Yeah, Jerry Kill and Nate Trialing want to talk this over with their defense. Hawaii's gone for it on fourth down a lot this year. They are two for ten. There's a look at their head coach, Timmy Chang. There's the Aggie head coach, Jerry Kill, the best half of football the Aggies have played so far this year. I know it's early, Danny, and the question is, do you chase points or what do you do here? But does a field goal do you a lot right here late in this first half? Would you go for it if you're Hawaii? I don't I don't think – I think you, you don't start going for the, you know, the touchdown. I think you get whatever points you can. So if it's a field goal, you take the field goal right now because you got a whole other half, and there's a lot of things that can happen in that second half. Fourth and three. Line to gain is the 25-yard line for Hawaii. Running back is Parson. Shager with time to throw. Now the pocket collapses. He had a man wide open, and he missed him. He's overthrown Phillips a couple of times. And Phillips would have had a touchdown, Danny, if he made the catch. You know, busted coverage. That's Dylan Early out there that has coverage on him. He cuts across the middle, which really makes it hard when you're covering someone, and he gets really, really uh, congested in the middle there. So you see him coming across the bottom of your screen there, and he's chasing all the while, which means there's probably a busted coverage, but he just couldn't make the throw or the catch. So what a position the Aggies are in here. One, one timeout left, two minutes left. They will get the ball to start half two ahead, 28 to 10. Looking to finish this impressive first half offensively on a high note. Gavin Franks has been the man in charge. This could be the first time all year where the Aggies only use one quarterback in a game. Jamani Jones with a couple of stiff arms. And he drags Isaiah Tufonga up near midfield. 18-yard scamper for Jamani Jones, who has two rushing touchdowns here in the half. Man, it just seems like everything's working for the for the offense out there. Let's see what happens up front there. It starts with the big guys up front. Good blocking up there. Maybe a missed tackle, but Jones is just running so dang hard. And look at him take care of the football at the end because that's the other thing they're going to be doing, ripping at the ball. Take care of that football. Frakes looking deep, and he overthrows Jonathan Brady. It was Malik Hausman in coverage, the nickelback who has three interceptions this year. Gambling a little bit, right? Get down here yeah. with a minute 27 left. It's like, oh, you think we're going to run it? We're going to do a little play action. We're going to pop it out there and see if we can get Jonathan down the sidelines and get a big play at the end of the end of the uh, second quarter here. What you also want, too, if you're the Aggies, is you don't want Hawaii to have the chance to have the football back. Yeah, so you you even use, if you don't get points. Yep, agreed. You want to use up all that one minute, 27 seconds. Frakes will pull it. Runs up the middle. Dances around the defense. And he's dragged down from behind. That might have been a horse collar as well for the cornerback, Edwards. 
I'm just amazed of, of watching Gavin run. Here it is right here. He pulls it out. He rides him all the way in. Again, he just keeps it. They're going with the running back, and he takes it up there. But not only does he just get through the hole, he's busting it out there like, I'm going to take it to the house unless you stop me. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 19. Being forced the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's interesting. They called a face mask here on... Kalona McCalla, it's Edwards, and yeah, he got it. I guess he did get the yep. face mask. It seemed like a horse collar, but it was not McCalla like the referee Steve Barron said. It should have been on Verdell Edwards. Either way, the Aggies will take it, and they have the ball inside the 15-yard line. Right back to Jamani Jones trying to squeeze through a hole. Gets down to the 11, clock moving. Hawaii does have one timeout left. The Aggies with one as well. Right back to Jamani Jones, running right. Here's big right tackle, Gabriel Preciado. Gets two yards. So some clock management here as well for the Aggies with about 40 seconds left. You know, I don't think they're happy just saying, let's just kick it and be done with it. I think they want to put seven on the board. State. It's called their third time out. Timer, please set the game clock to 45 seconds. Four five. Thank you. You know, Adam, uh, yesterday, as I was telling you before the game, I ran into Gavin's grandmother in the, in the hotel in the elevator, and uh, she was saying, you know what, he's starting tomorrow, and I don't even think we knew. Maybe she knew. I don't know. You never tell a grandmother that wrong news, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, fantastic. I hope he has a big game. And she said, oh, yeah. Yeah, things are going to be good. So, so his grandmother's here. He's putting on a performance. Everything is looking good. Nobody knows you quite like Grandma, right? Yeah, no doubt. Gavin Frakes has been really impressive, especially with his legs. He's run for 69 yards, which is second of the Aggies here tonight. 111 on the ground for Star Thomas. 60 on the ground for Jamani Jones. Watkins with 18. Brady with 10. So this has been... Really, really good all around for the Yankees offensively. With 268 on the ground in one half of football. Looking for more right here. Third and five. Breaks back to throw. Whistles it for Star Thomas. And he somersaults into the end zone. Receiving touchdown for Star Thomas. His second touchdown tonight. Oh. And Gavin Franks throws his second touchdown this year. Adam, he threw that ball, and Starr hadn't even turned around yet. I didn't think there's no way he can pull this down. He hasn't even turned around. He released that thing, then Starr turned around, and it was on him. It's like, how does he hold on to it? Somehow he does a great throw, a great reception by Starr, and he just takes it in the house. Great series. The timing on place like that, Danny, it's really hard to time it. The timing has not been good the first four games. The timing really good tonight. And no bobbles, no tips. Nope. They just pulled that one down and just took it to the house. The ruling on the field of a touchdown for further review. Yeah, I thought maybe they would check this one out to see if his knee was down before the goal line. I'm just so impressed of how he just threw that ball. He knew exactly what he was going to do with it. Star hasn't come out of the break yet. He's still coming out of the backfield. Hasn't turned around, releases the football. Star turns around, and the ball's there. It's on him, and he just pulls it down. You can just see right here, Star really hasn't kind of, he peeks, and the ball is on him right there. Nice catch. Ooh, I think he's in. Yeah, I think his so, knee too. He really never came I down. Think so, too. Potentially his elbow, maybe, on that somersault. Well, if this does stand, it would be six plays, 72 yards, a minute 20. So that's that two-minute drill that is so important in football. Right. And you're running that with a freshman quarterback who is in his first year collegiately. And he ran that two-minute drill with a lot of poise. Yeah, the elbow might have been down before the goal line. Yeah, that's a great shot right there. Didn't quite see where the football was, though, when his elbow went down. Yeah, his football, I think, is tucked behind him. 
Well, if it doesn't go as a touchdown, you keep Star Thomas in and you let him plunge it in, right, Danny? I think so. I think you have to reward him, right? Isn't that the rule? Yep. It's like, hey, you brought it down this far. But if you're going to reward someone, Gavin, Gavin on that big run, he has really kept us in the ball game there from a QB standpoint. I say keep us in the ball game. We have a lead, and so he's really trying to put more points on the board. But they're not satisfied. It's like, no, let's just kick it. No, let's go get seven. I, I like that. I like the aggressiveness. This is the same officiating crew as week zero here at Aggie Memorial against Nevada. Our referee is Steve Barron. After further review, it was determined that the runner was down at the one-half yard line. The ball will be placed there. It will be first down at the one-half yard line. Timer, please reset the game clock to 43 seconds. 4-3. Thank you. So first in goal, Thomas will stay in. And I think everybody in the stadium knows who will get the football right here. With a pair of tight ends in, Eric Marsh and Tomas Whitford. Marsh is lined up, wing left. Franks will give it to Thomas. Trying to bulldoze his way in. And Hawaii will stuff him. Now the Aggies do not have any timeouts left, so Gavin Franks has to work quickly here. Franks will pull it. He dumps it off, and it's caught. Tomas Whitford. His third touchdown catch as an Aggie in two years. It's only his second overall catch this year. That's one of those ones, Adam, where you go into the huddle and coach says, hey, look, you know, we have no timeouts. I'm going to call two plays. We're going to run the ball. We're going to try to power it in. And then we're going to come back. They're going to think we're running the ball. We're going to pull it out. And as soon as we do, we're going to pop it over top. And you're going to, Thomas, you're going to get out, sneak out of the backfield. And it's just an easy little pitch and catch there. Tomas Whitford was used a lot in the passing game a year ago. Last year, 19 catches for 206, two touchdowns. He only had one catch for three yards in the first four games, and he hauls in a touchdown pass here from Gavin Franks. So Gavin Franks does get his second touchdown pass of the year. It comes a few seconds after what we thought was a star Thomas, nine yard touchdown catch. So Adam, 16 seconds left. Here we are, 35-10. It's been a while since we've had one like this going in at halftime with the lead, which puts a whole different perspective on what you have to tell the players at halftime. Instead of saying drilling them, it's like, come on, we got to get going. We got to get points on the board. Here we put points on the board. Now the job is don't let your foot off the accelerator because the minute you do, Hawaii is going to come back. They're not going to give up at halftime. So the whole speech changes here, but it's sure nice to, to work from a lead. Once again, we remind you the Aggies will get the ball to start half two. They won the opening toss. They elected to kick off instead of receiving. They allowed a touchdown in to the opening possession for Hawaii, and the defense since then has been good. And Jalen Purdue is stuffed on the return. So Hawaii had a good start offensively in that first possession. And then after that, this defense has played a good half of football overall. Danny, no takeaways, but... A good half of football. Now, I agree. They've been tough that, that first series, but after that first series, Adam, they've been putting their heels in, and he's mixing it up. Coach is doing a good job, and it's just been a good half of football for, for the Aggies. It's been a long time since we've seen that. We'll see how Hawaii handles these final 11 seconds, and it looks like they're just going to snap the football and head to the locker room. Well, well, well. Those first four weeks were grueling. Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Aggies played four bull teams from a year ago. This is their fifth straight game to start the year against a team that had a bull bid a year ago. Hawaii had a bull bid, did not play because of COVID. But that was one really good half of football. That was Jerry Kill football and half number one for the Aggies as they lead the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors by the score of 35 to 10. 268 on the ground. Through the air, the Aggies pass for 71 as Gavin Frakes in just his second start of the year has looked really, really good. And 
We'll catch you up with Coach Kill here shortly, hopefully. Andy Morgan trying to track him down the sidelines, and looks like Coach already worked his way into the locker room. So we'll head a commercial break. He's too happy, right, Dan? He's too happy. I would say I'm going to run to the – get him. Guys, come on, we're up. So we'll head to break. When we come back, we'll start our halftime show. 35 to 10 at Aggies here at the break at Aggie Memorial. So big, big difference in that first half. And it didn't start pretty after Hawaii scored on their opening drive. And the Aggies will have the football to start half two. I know there's still a long way to go, but a, a touchdown here could, I don't want to say put the game away, but it, it changes it, your play it, it calling. It changes a right? lot, yeah. Because now you can't just be okay with let's just run, you know, three or four at a time and the clock ticks. And it's like, no, you, now you have to put points. You have to really catch up. So it's true. But the first thing is, how do you come out of a half where you played so well? Let's see if they've really, Coach Kill has really fired him up to keep the pedal down and just keep going. Star Thomas, the pistol back, six carries, 111 and a touchdown, along of 57 in that first half. Frakes pulled it there, and he is tripped up out of bounds by Kalona McCalla. So he's using his legs. Diego Pavia, the first four games, he was known as the running quarterback. Right. But... Gavin's running the football very effectively. And same thing here, like you're just going to come down here, it's an RPO, you're going to keep the ball, he's going to get outside, and those big long legs, it doesn't look like he's covering a lot of ground, but he got five yards. Previous four games, the Aggies used two quarterbacks at least in every single one. They might be able to go this one with only one QB. It's been Frakes the entire way so far. And the officials are discussing something right now with Gavin Frakes. Maybe the spot of the football or the actual football. Yeah, yep. they, they had the wrong football. So they had Hawaii's football being used by the Aggies, so they will switch it out. Second down and five coming up. Aggies are looking for their first win in the Jerry Kill era. Also their first since the season finale a year ago against UMass. They stretch it out for Jamani Jones. Flag is thrown. Jones will sidestep out of bounds near first down yardage, but we'll check the marker. You know, they're coming out in this uh, power formation where, let's see what the penalty is. Holding, offense, number 51, 10 yard penalty enforced in the first. Hey, we're all right. Second down. So that's the pulling center that comes out there and got his hands out around the outside, which they called a hold. But Adam, they're just going to the heavy set here where they come yeah. out in a pistol. You end up with uh, Jamani back there. You have a tight end and you just block down and everyone, I'm running left and here we go. That penalty was on A.J. Vipulu, the freshman from Riverside, California, who started at left guard against Wisconsin a week ago. His older brother, Solo, is a backup offensive lineman for Hawaii. So it's a family affair for the Vipulus here tonight. And the play is blown dead. Handoff went to Watkins and a lot of flags and a lot of whistles early on here in this quarter. Let's go. Ball start, offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five penalty, second down. This is what you do not want to happen, is play sloppy football when you have a big lead like this. Well, I think this what this leads to is some interesting discussions during film watching after you come out of a half where you do so well and you come out and make two silly mistakes that cost you and put you behind the sticks. So now it's second down and 20. Frakes back to throw near the end zone, and he throws it ahead. It's bobbled and then dropped by Jamani Jones. It was a dangerous pass. Frakes was near that goal line and Jones almost made the catch. Good hit for Hawaii. Yeah, Jones kind of snuck out. You see him at the right side of your screen there. And so he, he sees that he's in trouble and he kind of sneaks out of the backfield and then he just takes a pop right when that ball is landing there and just couldn't hold on. That was Noah Kamana laying the hit. Senior out of Honolulu at safety for Hawaii. Aggies only had to punt the ball once in the first half. This is third and a bunch, third and 20. 
breaks underneath. Chris Bellamy is first catch. And Bellamy gets near the original line of scrimmage, picks up nine yards. And Josh Carlson will have to come out and punt for the second time tonight. You know, Coach ran off the field as fast as he could at halftime because I'm certain he was saying, look, we got still a lot of work to do in this half, and we're, they're not just going to go away, and we have to play hard. This wasn't what he had in mind. Come out, two penalties. You get behind the six, pushes you back. We managed to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and now you have to punt the ball away, three and out. Makes it tough. Carlson had a big punt of 54 yards earlier. Gets this one away. Another good kick. Dior Scott backs up to the 25. He does not call for a fair catch. He breaks a couple of tackles. Finally, he's tripped up by Trevor Brohard on another really good punt. This one goes for 50 for Carlson, who's having a great career. Well, talk, talking about flipping the field, that's one way to do it, right? It's like, okay, we couldn't get it done. Let's make sure we punt the ball as far as you can. That is a great punt right there. Aggies starting a homestand tonight. They're going to host Florida International next week. FIU was pounded by Western Kentucky earlier today. Oh, my goodness. That score was 66-0 at one point. FIU rebuilding. Then the Aggies will have UNM and San Jose State. It's a very winnable homestand and yep. a very winnable yep. finish to the year. I think that ended up 73-0 is what I wow. saw. Wow. So that, that's crazy. But you got to take care of business here first, right? Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Right now, defense... Dig your heels in. Let's see what we got. Braden Shager started. He will stay in. We have not seen Joey Yellen yet, the second quarterback who had started the previous three games for Hawaii. Parson breaks a tackle. Parson passed the 40. Taken down by Bryce Jackson after a pickup of 11. Coach Drilling is still staying very committed to moving people around so we have lots of linebackers blitzing you can see they're all up on the line of scrimmage blitzing which makes it easy to get to the second and third level it's a good thing Bryce is back there at a short tackler to help shut things down Shager swings it out caught Diedrich Parson taken down from behind by Trevor Brohard third catch for Parson this one goes for four One of the things I really like is the speed at which the Aggie defense is playing. So here it is here. We're going to have a little dump out, little screen action here. And you just see a lot of people getting to the ball. You see four or five hats around the ball. That's what you have to play. You have to play fast and get to the ball and shut them down. Running back now is Tylen Hines. Shager rolling a right, and he has to throw it into the Aggie bench area. Ran out of room. Was being chased by Sterling Webb on the Aggie D line, a freshman from St. Louis. Coach brings them all again. He's not afraid to, to dial up the blitzing. Let's just bring the house. I think Gabe Peterson was throwing up his arms like he got held there, he, or he could have got to the quarterback. But he brought the house, chased him out of the pocket, and he had to dump the ball to get it out of there and puts him in this third and long position. Third and six. As you can see, Hawaii has really struggled on third down tonight. And all year, only 33% coming in. Deep back is Hines. Three out wide. Hines will motion to the right of Shager. Hawaii needs the 49-yard line, and this pass goes into no man's land. Bryce Jackson was the only player on either team anywhere near the football. I guess that's what you call not being on the same page, right? It's like, well, I thought you were going long. And based on the coverage, you may think you could beat the guy and we're going to take him long for that pass. But he broke off the route and made it a short route and no one was there. Confusion there with Murray, Jordan Murray, the tight end, who has been used at wide receiver tonight. Matthew Shipley will punt again for Hawaii. Gets the punt away barely. Lawrence Dixon will handle. Lawrence Dixon on his feet. Changes directions. Gets a big block up field from Pierce Humpick. Lawrence Dixon inside the 40. Best return all year for the Aggies. One of the hardest things to do is punt return. Catching punt returns. And he did it and did a great job. And... He just stayed in there. You have to catch the ball, and everyone is barreling down full blast, ready to light you up. And he had all intentions to run the whole time, not fair catching. He picks up a great block right there, great call on that, Adam. And he breaks it to the left, 
big return sets us up in a fantastic field position. Hey, you want to play? You start on special teams. Yeah. Pierce Helpix, yep. a true freshman out of Louisville, who just laid a huge block to get Dixon probably 20 or 30 additional yards. Yeah, no doubt about it. You're absolutely right. Return of 37 for Dixon after a punt of 33 from Shipley. Ball is officially at the 40. Watkins oh. wrestled down. Tackle made by Colby Wyatt, the senior defensive lineman from San Diego. He's just running that RPO, and he's trying to look at the numbers and see who's going to take the ball, who's going after Gavin, and who's going to release. He gives the ball in that case. We almost got to see Amante's wheels on that. Drakes will change the play call. Off to his left is Marsh. Stretches it out left for a star, Thomas. And he pushes the pile for a couple more. He might be stopped for a couple. Well, he still finds a way to get three right there. I, I thought he was, was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage and getting yeah. nothing out of there. He just puts his head down, and he just keeps those legs going and, and gets a little aid from the, from the offensive line there and puts him in a third and short position. That's just a great play on second right there by Starr. Jerry Kill said last week, he said there might not be a hole for Thomas or Jones, but they have to punch their own hole. And Starr Thomas continues to do that, and he does it again. First down for Thomas, down to the 26-yard line. Star Thomas is really coming into his own right there. But again, look at the offensive line blocking right there. He gives him enough of a hole where he can get down in there, get his shoulder pads lower to the ground, and just push. And you've got to get low if you're going to bring that boy down because he is running nice and fast and hard. And I think he's over 100 yards easy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he's officially at 120 right now. Star Thomas angling a right, trying to hurdle a defender. He's about to leap in the air. Mackey Pay right there to wrap him up. So Coach Beck staying with it. Whatever it is we have working, we're just going to keep going right there. So get a little counter action. You get someone pulling to come across there, create another hole opening for Star, and he just gets after it. Down to the 18-yard line, second down and two. Thomas, the pistol back, big running rim right. Trying to bounce it to the edge, spins, and he sidesteps out of bounds, just shy of the five-yard line. Another Aggie first down behind the running of the Homer, Louisiana native, Star Thomas. Star Thomas is just a beast. He's, he's doing a, he has a fantastic job running the ball. And here is the old, if you don't want to tackle me, stick an arm out, but I'm not going down, and it's going to take a lot more than that to bring me down. So it's first and goal from the seven. Watkins running back left, Jones running back right. The handoff goes to Watkins, who had a rushing touchdown a week ago at Wisconsin. And he gets the Aggies even closer to the goal line, inside the five, down to about the three and a half yard line. I think Amonte thought he could take that to the house, get it in the end zone there, and it's just kind of opened up quickly in there, and he just couldn't keep his feet underneath him. A lot of weapons in that running back corral, right? Yeah. Oh, it's just whoever's back there, here we go. Jamani Jones went off. Watkins stays in. He's the pistol back. Tight end is Marsh, wing right. Franks will pull it, trying to find the pylon, and he's going to be up short. Might have been the first time tonight where he shouldn't have pulled it. Yeah, that was a close one right there. So I'm certain that uh, Hawaii at halftime was saying, okay, look, we're not going to let that go anymore. You, someone has to spy the quarterback the whole time and not allow him to run the ball. He's not going to run it all over us. In that case, they were really, really on him. Third and goal from the one. Here's Watkins, and he dives into the end zone. The second rushing touchdown in as many weeks for the transfer from TCU, Amante Watkins. Again, I think it comes back to that offensive line. Tempo, you come back with the tempo, lots of tempo in there. Create that little gap. Amante just sneaks in there and gets that TD. Number 29, Money on the catch 
Point after is good for Brett Money. Watkins joins the party. Rushing touchdown of his own. It's all Aggies here tonight at Aggie Memorial. A couple of rushing touchdowns for Jamani Jones, one for Amante Watkins, one from Gavin Franks, and one from Star Thomas. So it's been a host of Aggies, Danny, getting involved here tonight. I think every running back he, he has had in the game has scored a TD. Yeah. Tim Gans had a couple of uh, plays earlier and did not find the end zone, but also did not have a carry. So everybody who's touched the football has uh, found the end zone for the Aggies for the most part here tonight. 42 to 10, Aggies looking for the first win in the Cherry Kill era. We're back after this. Third meeting in about 12 months between the Aggies and the Rainbow Warriors. And Andy, that's the uniqueness of this independent scheduling, isn't it? Yeah, Adam, we mentioned it at the top of the broadcast and how it's been difficult for New Mexico State to schedule as an FBS independent. And case in point, your point, this is the third time these two teams have matched up in the last two years. Of course, Hawaii winning the first two matchups uh, last year. New Mexico State looking to get a win here uh, tonight. But scheduling going to get a lot easier for New Mexico State moving forward as a member of Conference USA. The league as a whole is going to look a little bit different with programs coming and going next year. But I can tell you this much, Director of Athletics, Mario Mocha, head football coach, and Jerry Kill, they are very ecstatic to be part of a league again, a part of a conference for the first time since 2017 when they were members of the Sun Belt. Thank you, Andy. All sideline reports brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. We just saw Jordan Johnson, freshman from Dallas, his first carry of the game. Here's Johnson again. There's a stable of running backs for the Rainbow Warriors as well. We've seen four now with Johnson getting a couple of carries here in the third quarter, Danny. Yeah, they're certainly not giving up, and I think they're just going to go back to the things that have been working for them. It's the run, you know. You're going to establish the run, then you go to the pass, go back to that first series they had where they just marched the ball down the field. And so that's just what they're all about right now in the third quarter. Speaking of Conference USA, it's going to be a conference game of sorts for the Aggies next week when they play future Conference USA foe Florida International, a program that was blown out earlier today. Carry from Parsons, stop made by Miami, Ohio transfer Mikai Miller. I see coaches kind of moving some of the secondary around, and we're starting to get more people back there, some experience, and so I like to see that. So get more and more people there, and that's what uh, Coach Drilling really likes is having twos push the ones. That's what he was telling me about when we talked. J.J. Durville, one of those twos, is also in the game now in the secondary. And the pass is dropped. That was Jordan Murray once again. This passing game has really struggled for the Rainbow Warriors. Shager is now 10 for 21. Yeah, there's a couple drops in there. We've been there. We've had a couple of tips and drops. We So we understand what it's what happens there. And they got a down uh, Rainbow Warrior. Officials timeout for an injured player. This is a really experienced Hawaii offensive line. That is Micah Vanterpool down, making his 21st career starts. And we're back to Aggie Memorial after these messages. Big third down and four. Rainbow Warriors need the 46. Black comes in. Dietrich Parson was telling the offensive line Something there. False start. Offense, number four. Five-yard penalty. Third down. And that leads to a false start from the wide receiver, Jalen Walthall. Parson was talking to the offensive line after motioning towards him. And that's a game changer right there. Shinger hit as he throws, and he completes it. Caleb Phillips once again, his fourth catch in the first half plus. 
Well, that's a great throw and a catch right there, especially when someone's in his face. So you see the stunts up front. Everyone's coming around from different angle. He gets stuck pretty good, but Caleb uh, he gets rid of the ball, and Caleb makes a great catch across the middle there. And, and that's just a great job of advancing the football. Phillips has been the best target for Shager. He came in with only three catches for 30 yards in the first four games. No touchdown catches this year. Parson nowhere to go. He's wrapped up immediately by Ojo and Brohart's there to finish him off. A couple of experienced linebackers for D.C. Nate Dryling. You know, not a lot happening up front there. They're going to still stick with that run to try to set up the pass, but Chris has just been all over the field. I think he's leading the, tack leading, uh, the Aggies in tackles. He's just playing a heck of a game out there. Ojo, of course, entered the transfer portal during the coaching change and then came out wanting to play for Jerry Kill, and I know the Aggies are happy to still have him. Throw across the middle, Jordan Murray escapes an initial tackle. Gets a couple extra yards after the catch, and J.J. Durbel is there in the secondary to meet him after a gain of 10. And the secondary piece of that, I, I think Coach is moving people in and out, giving a lot of folks some time. I like that because what happens is that when you work really hard at practice, you want to be rewarded for some of the things. So sometimes when you get up like you are and it's uh, 42 to 10, it's not a giveaway, right? So it's still an important part of the game, but put the players in there, let them get them some good experience. Run pass option for Shager, whistles a pass, good throw. And the catch is made by Dior Scott, senior out of Antioch, California. Maybe the best throw all game so far for I think, Shager. I think Braden stood back there in that pocket, and he had lots of time. And with that time, he gets set up. And now you can see his, his arm right there. It's a Highland Park, Dallas area quarterback. And uh, that was just a nice throw right there. Pass and catch of uh, 14. False start. Offense, number four, five-yard penalty. First down. That is two false start penalties on the wide receiver, Jalen Walthall, all during this current series. Both teams pretty clean in the first half penalty-wise. Not as clean here in half two. A lot more whistles, a lot more flags in this half. Approaching three minutes left in the third quarter. Aggies ahead by 32. Shager skips it to his wide receiver. Aggies with heavy pressure, forcing Shager into a low throw. I think coach is sticking with the, the confuse him up front. We're going to do some stunts. We're going to do some blitzing. That time it was Trevor. Trevor is a guy that you make sure you want to block because if you don't block Trevor, number 80 right there as it is, you can see him come right through there. Even if he has to put his arm down, he's enough of a great athlete that he can get up there and really cause a lot of havoc, and which is what he did, broke that play up. Second down and 15, a field goal right now. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good, down 32. Tons of time to throw underneath to Dior Scott. Good tackle in the open field by Mackay Miller. Has been used a lot here in the third quarter defensively. You see, lots of time this time. He cuts a, an, under, an under route and uh, just a little pitch and try to get as many positive yards as possible and still puts you in a third and long position. Scott only got four, so it's third and 11. Line to gain is the 12. Shager looks right, throws right. Dior Scott again. But he is well short of a first down. Well, slant her out. They needed 11. They only get half of that. And now you have to go for it, right, Daniel? Yeah, I think so. You've you got to stand up there because you need points, and you need a lot of points. So you might as well go for it at fourth. I like the defense. I like the defense when they're all up on the line of scrimmage. You don't know who's coming, who's dropping into coverage, and it really creates a lot of uh, chaos back there. Hawaii 0 for 1 tonight on fourth down, 2 for 11 for the year. Shager rolling a right. He lobs it. He has a man, and it's caught for a touchdown. It's Jalen Walthall who had the two penalties during the drive, and he hauls in his first touchdown catch this year. I think that was broken coverage in there, and I think uh, we had two Aggies that didn't want on the same page in terms of who was going to cover them. And it, when you have someone that just breaks open as much as he did, it's easy just to throw the ball to him and get him in the end zone. 
Good touch there by Shager. That is the first touchdown pass by a Rainbow Warrior quarterback all year. It comes in the fifth game. Point after from Shipley, who handles the punts, the field goals, and the extra points. So that is a big play for Hawaii to keep them in the game. You don't convert that, Danny, and give the ball back to the Aggies. It's probably over here late in the third. Yeah, and even with the seven as a minute 46, there's still some time, but you have to hurry in a, in a lot. I mean, it's tick, tick, tick. You got to get going. 16 yard touchdown catch by Walthall. 12 plays, 75 yards, 516. And you can see it crossing right at the broad bottom of the screen. You see him kind of crossing a front, uh, crossing the, the middle of the field, and both Aggie defenders just kind of pulled off, thinking, "Huh, I don't, I'm not sure who has him," which made it easy. Aggies with five rushing touchdowns here tonight. It's the first time they've had four or more rushing touchdowns in a game since 2019 when they ran for four at UNM on September 21st of 2019 in a game that was a shootout in Albuquerque. Lobos are in town in a couple weeks. The Aggies enjoying a four-game homestand now. They're going to be home for a month after being on the road for about a month. Jonathan Brady will watch it sail over his head. The Aggies will have it at the 25. If you had to grade Gavin Frakes here tonight, Danny, is, is it an A for the, for the true freshman? I think it is. I think he's handled all of the um, adversity from the first four games of, of trading in and out of quarterback, not getting a consistent reps. Um, but he steps in here, he reads the ball, he, he keeps it, he runs it, he throws it. He's just done a really fabulous job. I'm certain Coach is going to find things to improve on, but mm -hmm. I think it's an A. I think he's really marshaled the, the troops down the field and put 42 points on the board. The Aggies have had three-plus turnovers in three of the four games this year. Here today, they have none. Hawaii also has none. They fake it to Tim Gans. Frakes unloads. He has a man, oh. but he underthrew it. He had just his powers, and he underthrew it. Verdell Edwards, his second interception this year, the sixth pick this year for the Rainbow Warriors. Adam, that's tough right there. He did have it. He could see it, a little play action. He drops back. Powers gets behind, but he just doesn't put enough on it, and it just kind of falls short and throws a pick. So that's a tough one. Maybe that's on you, Adam, because you're the one that says, hey, how do we grade him? He's done great. He hasn't turned the ball over. And then, oh, man. That's always a dangerous time to talk yeah. about that and also right? talk about turnovers because right? that is the first turnover of the game on either team. So now the Aggie defense right back out there. Quick break. And now they will have to buckle down again. Braden Shager a whole lot more comfortable now here in this half. Quick dump off to Diedrich Parson. Brohard and... B.J. Schoolark there to meet him. You know, it's still important that you complete the game, that you don't just get to this point and just decide, hey, you know what, we're just going to kind of slow down and not worry about it, and they're not. Their effort is one of the things that I think the coaches really harp on every single day. And Shager can't connect there with Dior Scott, who's belted as he was trying to reach out and make the catch. It's always dangerous when you come across the middle like that, and J.J. Durville was the man who laid the hits. Coming across the middle, ball up high, and here's what happens. It exposes the ribs, and he knows it, and his hands come down quicker than they should, and you still take a pop, but yeah, you, if you complete that catch and you keep going all the way through, you're going to take a take one right to the ribs. Most importantly, Durbel avoids targeting in the process. Third and four for Hawaii. They pull it again, and it's incomplete. Malachi McLean, who's had a really good night, his best as an Aggie, and he breaks up that pass. Malachi was all over him. There was nothing, nothing there. I mean, there was he, great defense, 
um, and just stuck his hand in there and broke it up. He wasn't, wasn't tricked one bit. Let's take a look here. Quick pop out there, looking for that easy three yards for that first down, and he's all over it. Hawaii will have to go for it again. Remember, they had a touchdown moments ago on a fourth down and four. This is a fourth down and four. They need the 48. Throw is caught. James Phillips gets the first down near midfield. So now the Rainbow Warriors have converted on back-to-back -back fourth down plays. This pass and catch goes for seven. Yeah, Braden saw there was the only guy open was him cr under, crossing outside there to just a quick, he's open, get the ball to him as fast as possible, get that first down. Hawaii staying alive in this game with fourth down conversions. 42-17, final 30 seconds here in the third quarter. The Aggies led big at halftime. It's been 7-7 seven and seven for the two teams here in the third. So even here in the third quarter after the Aggies built a 35-10 lead at halftime. And it looks like Hawaii will not snap the football before the end of the third quarter. So we head to the fourth. The Aggies looking to hang on for the first win. That's the end of the third quarter. Time in out. the Cherry Kill era. In a whole lot different of a situation than the previous four games. 42-17 Aggies trying to hang on as we go to the fourth. You can, you can host Coffee. a party with Aggie yep. stuff. Braden Shager back to work to start the fourth quarter. Hit as he throws, and he overthrows Walthall. Some hand complete. fighting going on between two number fours there, Skulark and Walthall. And Shager's looked a lot better in this half, hasn't he? He certainly has. Um, even with the pressure coming, he's stayed in the pocket, and he's had some great throws. That last pass, there was pressure. He took a lot of pressure, took a little pop, but he still stayed in there and threw a good ball. Third and seven, likely four down territory again for Hawaii. They've gone for it on fourth down a bunch, three times in the game, two for three. But first, a third down and seven. They've had to throw the ball a lot more in this half because of the score. They're going to run it here. They catch the Aggies off guard. And true freshman Jordan Johnson runs for the first down all the way down to the 35-yard line. Gets 12 yards. I think that's where you catch the Aggies back looking for the pass, and you're playing pass. You're a little bit softer, and so they come back and just hand the ball off on a little quick handoff, get to the outside, and pick up that first down yardage. Johnson out of Allen High School in Texas from Dallas. Shager has to roll and fire downfield, almost caught. Getting his hands on it down there was Dior Scott. If it's a better throw, it's a touchdown again for Hawaii. Yeah, that, that looks like a situation where we're playing, we had deep coverage and we're playing very Play, playing to the right side. There's a receiver off to the right side of the screen. You can't see it. And we had to peel off. Um, Selden had to peel off and try to get to the middle of the field. But he was late. But I think you're right. If that was an on-time throw, that was yeah. a touchdown. I think we we played, got really out of position. 34 passing attempts now for Shager. Sophomore from Dallas. He's 18 of 34. Quick pass and catch here with Phillips, his main target. Team high fifth catch for the tight end from... And Sinitas, California. Third and short for Hawaii. Four for 12 on third down, two for three on fourth down. 332 of total offense for Hawaii. 184 through the air for Shager. Parson on the carry. And he doesn't get much. Maybe a yard. Maybe. Fourth down and short either way. Yeah, Chris Ojo is playing. He has, he's playing a really solid game up front there. Hits the one making a tackle here. He's probably got more than 10 tackles. Last time I looked, he had 10 tackles, a sack, a tackle for a loss. But he's everywhere. He's fast. He plays hard. He hits hard, and he wraps up. Aggie's trying to run Keyshawn Elliott on the field quickly, and he finally gets out there. Hawaii trying to make it three for three. 
They've converted on fourth down each of the previous two tries. Shager keeps on backing up, has loads of time. Now the pocket collapses. Hit as he throws, and he completes wow. the pass. What a throw. Phillips again on the reception. It's tough to stay with receivers like we talked about earlier on, but you have to do it. And we have a scrambling quarterback. He gets to him. Braden gets back in the pocket, and he's scrambling around in the pocket. Has enough presence to get the ball out, even though they're at his legs. That's just a great catch right there. And have to come, Miller had to come screaming in to, to uh, make that before he stampered into the end zone. Aggies once again trying to get new personnel on the field. Andre Selden came in at nickelback. It was the heavier package previously with Keyshawn Elliott in. Give is to Parson. And he drags a couple of Aggies inside the 10-yard line down to the 7. Four-yard pickup for Parson on the first down run. Clock continues to move as we hit 12 minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Aggies led 35 to 10 at the break. It's been even so far in half two. Probably something Jerry Kill will not be very happy about if the Aggies hang on here. Tylen Hines the running back. Hines running left, nowhere to go. Danny, it was Chris Ojo again, and Cyrus Dumas was there to finish him off. Yeah, Chris has played a, a great game. He's been all over the field, and he's a fast player we talked about. So we're just going to give the ball. We're going to kind of stretch the field, try to get to the edge, and try to move up. But there's no edge to be had when Chris is in the backfield. It just evaporates. But, you know, Hawaii's they've, they've hung in there, Adam. They've played really good ball this second half. They just got behind the score. Game high, 13 tackles now for the senior from Sunland, California, Chris Ojo. Third and 11 from the 12. Shager has a man, and this one is dropped. The first drop for Phillips. He's made some circus catches, yeah. and he couldn't snatch that one. Do you think he peeked a little bit around the corner Might to have. say, yeah, yeah. I think I can take this one to the house or somewhere there. I think he knows it, too. He was open. Um, I don't know if he was going to get much more than that, but... It was good to get the ball out right away. He's the open receiver. Aggie's coming up fast and hard on him, but he just couldn't hang on. So fourth and 11. And this time Hawaii changes their mind and they will kick. So they will try to make this a 22-point game. 29-yarder from Shipley. And it's good. So he's connected twice now. And the uh, decision-making change there for Hawaii. They had gone forward on fourth, and not, four, fourth down a bunch of times, Danny. But this time, they choose to kick the field goal. Well, um, try to get points on the board. Stay in the game, 22. Uh, I know that um, there's still 10 minutes left. And if you go back and look at they got a quick turnover. And with that turnover, they're able to put points on the board. So maybe they're thinking, fine, if we can get another turnover or something else happens, we'll just collect these points as this fourth quarter goes on. And then um, we'll see where that takes us. But they put, went for a lot of fourth downs, and they got them. We just saw Timmy Chang talking to his quarterback, Braden Shager. He has a really, really good head coach to learn from. Shager, that is. Timmy Chang, legendary quarterback as a player at Hawaii. First season for him as the head coach after being hired in late January. He was a four-year starter and a record-setting quarterback at Hawaii in the early 2000s. At the time, he had the NCAA record for all-time passing yards and total offense. So a very impressive career. Program record, 29 career wins at quarterback. And his Rainbow Warriors in danger of falling to 1-4 here. You know, in the second half here, I think it um, looks like Hawaii is, is uh, three for four with fourth downs. I think that kept them alive. Jerry Kill calls a timeout. New Mexico State is called their first timeout of the half. The reason being 30 second is timeout. they feared an onside kick there. Tyler Wright's the special teams coordinator. He was right next to Jerry, and they had to use a timeout just in case. Uh, Hawaii was trying for an outside kick. I think that's a great timeout right there. Get your hands team out there. Well, the Aggies are looking for their first ever win against Hawaii. This has been an all-time series that 
dates back to 1979. They are scheduled to meet again next year in September. We'll see if that holds up because the Aggies have to do some rescheduling now with the move to Conference USA. But they met back in 2011 and it was a shootout. A Hawaii win, 45-34. This game was played in Honolulu. Here you see Kenny Turner, a 46 yard touchdown run. He ran for 119 in the game. Matt Christian, Had a big game as well. Christian threw for 224, two touchdowns for the Aggies. And Hawaii beat the Aggies 45-34 in that game. And this is the 11th all-time meeting. The Aggies have never beat the Rainbow Warriors. And the Aggies recover the kick. So you need to get the hands team out there, Danny. And that's Chris Ojo wearing 86. <laughs> so he can't wear a three because the Aggies had a different three are in special teams in that scenario, so he had to wear a different jersey, and he's doing it all tonight. That's a hard one to be on hands team because the other team is coming to just take your head off, so you have to be sure-handed and know that you can take care of the football. He stepped up there and had complete confidence, went after the ball, didn't wait for it to go 10 yards. It's like, I can go get it and down it right away. It's a heck of a game. Heck of a story, too, for Chris Ocho. He was not born in America. He was born in Nigeria, moved to America at an early age. There's Tim Gans with his first run tonight. He's been in the game a bunch, but his first carry. Aggies liked what they saw from Gans a week ago against Wisconsin, and despite the score, he really earned himself some more playing time, Danny. Well, he had nine carries when he had 38 yards, and against a, a very stubborn Wisconsin defense, and it didn't matter if it's one, two, threes, whatever's going in there, you're playing against a, a very good team, and so that's complete confidence when you can give them the ball that many times. Gans is the deep back here. Right back to him. Tim Gans, hard running. He's not a big guy, but he's physical. He's listed 5'10", 195. He's out of Missouri City, Texas. And Tim Gans runs for a first down. And I was thinking the same thing, a hard runner, because he stuck, he went in there, stuck his foot on the ground, turned it upfield, and tried to get as many positive yards, and just hard running. The Aggies have run for 300 plus. They've only thrown for 81 yards, but Gavin Franks has only made one mistake with the one interception. Tim Gans again falls forward before he's tackled by Noah Kemma, the linebacker. Aggies got everyone up. I mean, uh, Hawaii's got everyone up on the line of scrimmage. They know we're going to run the ball, use the clock, so they're going to try to force our hand and try to not just give them any big plays out there. A little stretch play, but with as many people that were in the box, there was just nothing going to happen there. No gain on the previous play. Second down and 10. And it's still Tim Gans. A lot of running room for Gans. Inside the 20. Trying to cut it back, he does so inside the 10. First and goal for the Yagis behind the running from Tim Gans. Tim Gans feels, he gets into the hole, and once you're into the hole, you have to look for the green out there and see where the open field is. Watch him get into the hole, first of all, great job up front by the line. He gets up into the hole, sees it to the left, and breaks to the left, and just goes, gets as many yards as possible, then takes care of the football, two hands, like to see that. First and goal from the nine yard line. Gans the running back. It was Childress in motion and we get a flag. Ball start, offense number 56, five yard penalty, first down. On a night where the offensive line has been really good as a whole, that's on Kanan Yarrow, the center, transfer from FCS Southern Utah. Aggie coaching staff really, really high on that young man. So first and goal from the 14. Eric Marsh in motion. Tim Gann slips initially and goes nowhere. Met by defensive end Matayo Soli, the transfer from Arkansas. Lots of people getting lots of reps, like to see that at um, 
kind of gets back to, you know, you work hard, you're going to see the field. And earlier you said, you know, you get out there and whether it's going to be special teams or what part of the game that you get in, you do something good, that means your, your playing time just gets increased. So anyone that touches the ball that's getting extra blocks, you know they're going all out because they want to get more time on the field. He's still back, Jamani Jones. Franks will pull it. Franks will dance inside the 10-yard line. He's down to the nine. He gets a handful, and now it's going to be third and goal for Gavin Frakes in the Aggies. New Mexico State, State number off. nine, must come out for a play. His helmet, third down. So here comes Diego Pavia because Frakes has to sit out of play. And Pavia is the man who started three of the four games this year. So now in every single game this year, the Aggies have used at least two quarterbacks. And this is a big juncture here for Pavia. We'll see if he can help the Aggies punch it in. Motions, Powers, fakes it to Justice Powers. Looking to throw, he lobs it towards the end zone. Good touch. And it's incomplete, broken up. Eric Marsh was there. Mekki Pay in coverage. Did he get a hand in there? I couldn't really tell. That was a great job. So you're Diego, you're cold, you're coming in cold, play action. They're thinking certainly you're not gonna let him throw the ball when he just comes off. Ooh. Oh, that's that's six, Adam. That's gotta be caught. That's hard on Diego, because he comes in, throws a beautiful ball, and right in the hands, that's gotta be caught. What a great job. Yeah. You're cold, it's like, no, you're in. And by the way, you're gonna throw the ball. Great confidence to be able to go in and do it. 26-yard field goal try, the first collegiate field goal try for Brett Money. And he kicks it through. The redshirt freshman from nearby Alamogordo knocks in his first collegiate field goal try and extends the Aggie advantage. Under seven left in quarter four. As a reception in this game, we're talking about J.J. Jones, tight end, a graduate transfer out of Dartmouth. Came out of the locker room at the halftime. He was in crutches, had his ankle heavily taped. I'm told he is out for the remainder of this game. So a little bit, a little bit of a blow there at tight end. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. And Danny, he's a valuable player on the field. He's also a team leader off the field. So. Aggies, for the most part, have been pretty healthy the previous four games, and hopefully J.J. Jones is okay going forward, but unavailable the rest of the way today. Yeah, it's too bad. Eric Marsh used a lot more probably because of that. Trevor Stevens is a young freshman tight end from Lubbock who could see some more action because of that. Here's Carson Zilmer to kick off. Brett Money had been handling the kickoffs, but he had a kickoff earlier go out of bounds before it reached the goal line. So Zilmer will kick off. Jerry Kill is trying a lot right now, a kicker. With Ethan Albertson struggling, Brett Money kicking field goals, and now Carson Zilmer kicking off, at least for now. Adam, it's amazing if you, if you look at the roster and look at how many people are getting in the game at different positions, it's really a, a point where coaches are saying, okay, we have this lead now. Let's start moving people around. Let's see what we got as we're building into this back half of the uh, schedule. Danny, I'll say this. If you want to search for a positive in the previous drive, of course you wanted seven, but you got a chance to get Brett Money a field goal in a game. I right. think that's huge going into next week, the fact that he got a kick in a game, and it was a shorter field goal of 26, so now his feet are wet a little bit in a collegiate football game. If you want to look for a minor positive there, uh, of course you wanted seven, but Brett Money got some work in. Chris Ojo, once again on the tackle, he's nearing 15 now. Let's just watch Chris. He's in the middle there. As you see him just go sidelines to sidelines, he's not picked up. A lineman doesn't come out to get him. And at some point, he sees the ball, and he just goes downhill and gets it. It's just a great job right there. Big numbers today for Chris. Well, trickery here for Hawaii. Shager can throw this. He will downfield. The Aggies read it pretty well but it is dropped in perfectly by Shager, hooking up again with his big tight end, Caleb Phillips. 
Wow. That, that's amazing right there. So pressure in the backfield, and it's a heck of a long throw that he's got to get the ball out there. And, and Durville's on him. And so here it is right there. Reverse, going to get it back to Brayden. He's going to throw the ball, launch it out there. And brayden has got decent coverage, but that's just a great ball. It's a fade that he just pulls it down. Empty backfield for Shager here. Rifles a pass, caught again. Caleb Phillips again. He now has eight catches, a career day for the senior from Encinitas, California, a transfer from Stanford. You know, they're picking up big chunks here too, so get the ball down the, down the field 20 or 30 at a time. That makes it tough. Aggies are playing a little bit softer in the back end, so that allows some of those passes in there because you don't want to give up an easy TD, so you're putting up big pressure up front, and you got the defensive backs a little bit and linebackers a little bit soft, and you're giving them up the little in the middle. The previous connection went for 16. Jordan Johnson can't go anywhere. Devlin Kirkland comes up and makes the tackle from his strong safety position. And Johnson's in a lot of pain. Officials tie off injured player. That's Jordan Johnson, the young running back, who's had four carries now today. Out of Dallas, Allen High School, and We'll come back to Aggie Memorial Stadium after this timeout. Just over five minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Aggies leading big, looking for their first win this year, and there was movement up front. Outside. Defense number 25 in the neutral zone caused the reaction from the offensive player. Five yard penalty, second down. That's our nose guard, Lama Levea Danny. It is very important for the Aggies to finish this one strong and without penalties and miscues. Yeah, I, certainly there's going to be things to clean up, and you don't want to just finish sloppy because it just shows that you become complacent, and I don't think that's Jerry Kill football. Shager back to throw again. It's been a busy day for him throwing the football. And he eventually just tucks it, had nobody to go to. I'll tell you what, too, the Aggies have used a lot of bodies, especially defensively. Malachi McLean's in there right now. J.J. Durville, Devlin Kirkland, Lama Levea, Noah Orense, and Mikai Miller just came in. Those are twos. Those are not starters. So yep. they're going deep in their bench. Yep, and, and that's what... The Coach Drilling was talking about when I spoke to him. I said, well, if there's one thing you have to try to improve on, what would that be? And he said, making the twos push the ones so they become better, so no one has become complacent and just lackadaisical. That was an interesting response. Shager on third down and 10. He oh. escapes. He's going to tuck it and run. Running horizontally, he slides. Ball pop loose. And I think he slid... A couple yards short. He probably could have had the first down, but he went horizontally and he slid short of the first down. The runner was down prior to the ball coming loose. Timeout for an injured player. Scrambling, no one there. Everyone's covered, so great coverage. And now he's just going to break out and see what he has. I think he, I think he did. Slide short, Adam. Now, you don't want to take a hit if you're the quarterback, but I think he would have had the first down if he just keeps on running forward and he started moving to his left horizontally. And he's three yards short as it sits right now. The injured player was the center, Iliki Tanuvasa, team captain. So he goes off. The new center, it looks like, is going to be Stefan Bernal Wentz. Check that. It's going to be Sergio Muisau at center now, and Bernal Wentz stays at left guard. And a timeout is called by the Aggies defensively. New Mexico State has called their first hard time out of the second half. Full timeout. 11th all-time meeting between the Aggies and the Rainbow Warriors. Aggies looking for their first ever win against Hawaii. Nate Dreiling's defense holding Hawaii to 20 points so far today. Danny, 
They've only allowed 37 per game this year, and I say only because those are the best numbers since the bull year of 2017. So we've seen clear improvement the first five weeks. Yeah, it, certainly he's got good numbers, and it's just a whole new defense he had to install, and it's, it's really, he's done a great job. Fourth and three, Hawaii needs the 12. They air it out towards the end zone. Good coverage, B.J. Schoolark, and then a late flag comes in. Schoolark defending Murray. Flag comes in, it will be pass interference on Schoolark. Pass interference, defense number four. Ball will be placed at the two yard line, automatic first down. It's still tough, Ad. When you get 6'5 up against 5'11, mm -hmm. it makes it hard. So even if you're in good position, um, it's you get tangled sometimes, but he's there. He's just uh, got to make a play without trying to hang on him a bit. So instead of turnover on downs, the ball is placed at the two, and it's first and goal from the two. Dietrich Parson already has one rushing touchdown today. Came early on to give them a 7-0 lead. Shager rolls and throws incomplete, looking for Dior Scott. That was Durbel in coverage there. And there is a flag down, it looks like. Personal foul, face mask, defense number four. Ball Pass the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's a tough one right there. That's two straight penalties now on Schoolark. Cornerback out of Temple, Texas, only played in four games a year ago. So now he's going to head off. Cyrus Dumas returns for Schoolark. Ball is at the half yard line. Parson is stuffed. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at the push from that defensive line. Oh, my goodness. Danny, that was big. Devin Bell, 6'5", 295, redshirt junior out of Meeksville, Alabama, laying the lumber on Diedrich Parson. He just penetrated in there. He just pushed everything back, beat the block, and stood in the hole and said, what are you going to do? You have to run around me, and it's not going to happen. And the clock's moving. Under three left. Pistol back, Parson, trying to fall oh. forward, and he's short again. Cyrus Dumas was the man who had the initial contact, and he's saying, not in my house here. Yeah. Comes around from the side there, wasn't blocked, and had to hurry and pull those legs and keep him short. He had to get both legs pulled in, otherwise you're just going to carry him into the end zone. And these are precious wow. seconds ticking off the clock for Hawaii. There it is, Trevor on one side, and then you have... Cyrus on the other side. Third and goal from the one. Clock still moving, almost two left. Wow, and now Hawaii will use a timeout. They wasted about 20 seconds. Hawaii got their first charge timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Timer, please reset the game clock to 210, 210. Thank you. They could have had a timeout about 20 seconds ago and not used all that clock. This, of course, is huge for Hawaii to have any shot of making this one interesting. Aggies ahead by 25 with 2.10 left, but Danny, there haven't been a lot of wins around here coming off back-to-back 2-10 and -ten seasons, so even though it's 25, it just feels a little closer, doesn't it? It does, and I think um, I think everyone that I'm that it, texting back and forth is like, okay, I'm just holding my breath, I'm just holding my breath, because so many things have gone wrong in the past. It's like, oh, I don't know, but yes, I think um, it's a different uh, demeanor. This team is is there, and Coach Darlene is calling a great defensive game, but yes, two minutes, and it, it feels closer than it is. Third down and goal from the one. Red zone efficiency, pretty good on both sides. Shager pulls it, oh. Shager short. Another great wow. tackle. Wow. Devlin Kirkland and J.J. Durville. 
Wouldn't this be some kind of a way to finish? It would. Momentum-wise for the Aggies defensively. Let's see it right here. Pulls the ball. He keeps it. Gets around the outside. And just a great tackle again. You get down there. You pull both legs together. And nothing happened. And you get no further yards. Once again, these are the twos. This is the Aggies' backup defense for the most part. And a timeout is called again by Hawaii. Hawaii has called their second charge timeout of the half. 30 seconds timeout. You look for late positives in a game like this where you're up a bunch, where if you finish strong in aspects of the football game, you can feel really good going into the next week. We mentioned this earlier, Florida International was absolutely pounded by Western Kentucky earlier today. So, you know, you still have to play the football game, and we're not calling wins around here, Danny, but you like your chances next week, and you like your chances the entire home state. Yeah, I think so. After FIU, you have uh, UNM coming to town, which is always a great, fun game to call. I think they lost 38 to nothing to LSU. LSU is a building program, so... I mean, that's not shabby. So these are games that we can be competitive in. And so starts with this one here. you got to get that first one under your belt, and then you build it from there. Another fourth and goal from the one. Low snap. Parson dances into the end zone. That was a dangerously low snap. Parson, his second rushing touchdown, giving him six this year. Back-to-back -back weeks now with a pair of rushing scores and 14 career rushing touchdowns for the Philadelphia native. You know, the difference between that play and the other ones that were, um, the other three that were shut down short is that the offensive line really got a push. So let's see the offensive line, see how they got the push. And with that little push, we're only talking yards here. So you get the defense back on their heels just for a yard or two. It creates enough room where you can sneak in behind them. Hawaii will, attempt a two -point conversion. Hawaii will go for two. Trying to make this a 17 point game. And of course would still be a three score game though. Jager under heavy pressure, and he is swung down by a host of Aggies. One of the first men to meet him, Tyrese Thomas, the sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas. And, of course, Chris Ojo was hanging around as well. Wow. Effort. Lots of Aggies to the ball. Four or five of them there. You know, Adam, when, every time I talk to a coach, the first thing they talk about is effort. He says, any coach I speak to says, you know, Coach Kill talks about effort, and that's the biggest thing we start with. There's got to be effort every single day on every single play. That's effort right there. That's where it shows right there. New and Mexico so State, number three, beware 90 during this play. Chris Ojo back on the hands team here. Recovered an onside kick earlier. So Jamani Jones, that's Jamani Jones right there wearing number 90. Now he's on the hands team as well. Trying to find your best guys here to recover this onside kick. Aggies ahead by 19, trying to recover this and then run out the final 88 ticks. They're just going to kick off, so no onside kick. And the Aggies will have it at the 25 and just run out time. Good night for the Aggies, Danny. This was. I guess you could say somewhat of a rocky start the first couple minutes as Hawaii marched down, taking an early 7-0 lead, and there was a lot of resiliency shown right away, and the Aggies built a huge halftime advantage. Yeah, you know, after that first drive, it could have been easy to say, oh, dang it, poor us, but they didn't, and they made the adjustments and come back. So now we're going to have a change in quarterback just to keep with the theme of everyone on the field. So he's playing a lot of players. Just great effort all the way around. And Omari Samuels comes in at running back. He will get his first carry of the year, and that's a good run for yeah. Omari Samuels, who a year ago was the starting running back on opening day. 11-yard carry for Samuels, the Los Lunas native. Hey, this is a time right now for Omari to 
fight for more show, PT. Yeah, because there's a there's a there's a corral full of running backs that are doing quite well, and he's a very talented guy as well. The Aggies will let the clock run down inside of a minute. Diego Pavia will take a knee. You love that victory formation. It will be the first win in the Jerry Kill era. The first win since the season finale a year ago against UMass. Danny, they call him the fix-it guy around college football. Might take a little bit of time to really get the program to where he wants to get it to, but there's no question they're on the right track right now. You know, you get to interact with him more than I do, but it, it seems like, Adam, that he has a focus. He has something in mind. And, and he just drives to that goal no matter what it is. 45-26 is the final score. The first win in the Jerry Kill era. Aggies improved to one and four. They start off the homestand on a high note. And Hawaii falls to one and four on the year. That first half set the tone. That second quarter was impressive, scoring 21 points. The Aggies only scored 10 points in half two, and it was even in half two. 10-10 is how half two finished, but it was such a big lead at halftime. The Aggies got the ball to start the third quarter, and you can kind of sense the direction this game was going in at halftime, Danny. Yeah, and I think from that, I think as they get into the third quarter, I think the, the process was let's get as many people in the game as possible, which we saw, and that just builds a stronger roster all the way around. So it was just a, a good win uh, for, for all three phases of the game. The offensive, defense, and the kicking game, very strong. So a lot, a lot of positives to take into next week. There will be post-game fireworks, which is something new. And we'll start shooting those off in about five minutes or so. Jerry Kill's got a lot of places to go to before he gets to Andy Morgan for the post-game interview. 45-26, the final score, Florida International will be the opponent next week. J.J. Jones was injured early in the game, did not return, so that's bad news. Hopefully he's okay going forward. All right, Andy Morgan is Steve by with our post-game interview with head coach Jerry Kill. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win. Your first as the head coach here at New Mexico State University. Everyone's excited here. Uh, you got to be excited about that, but especially the way that you guys won this football game in dominating fashion. Well, the biggest thing is, uh, I said earlier the week, I want to do it, go back and do it the way I want to do it. And, uh, and that's run the football and, and uh, play action pass and play good defense and be good in the kicking game. and. Uh, except for one pass, Gavin really played well. And uh, and then defensively, we, we got to play a little better in the second half. But, hey, a win's a win, and, and it's hard to win. So we're going to take it and enjoy it. Offensively, you mentioned running the football, over 350 yards running the football. Is that kind of how you guys want to play, especially with a true freshman at quarterback? You guys just controlled the line of scrimmage from the kick. That's the way Coach Kill always likes to play. Anybody tell you that's how you turn programs around and, you know, shorten the game, help the defense out, and uh, keep it close to the fourth and win. But we, uh, our offense did a great job in the first half. We hadn't done that all years, but uh, we put a lot of work into it. Last one for you, Coach. How do you use this maybe as a springboard moving forward, your next three at home, that starts next week against FIU? Well, I, you know, I think I think our kids are going to be excited to play. And, and, uh, and the reason we play – play well at home or played pretty good is that the people we've had a great crowd you know here and uh you know i enjoyed going around all the tailgate stuff and uh you know this is lost cruises this is lost cruises is win their team their win uh i'm an old man shit i just enjoy life every day coach congratulations on the win appreciate it adam Thank you, Andy. How can you not love Jerry Kill? His first win here, the Fix-It Guy gets the first one. FIU next week, our new Senda Credit Union postgame show comes up next.